Hello everyone and welcome to How to Train Your Shovel Knight, which was a, a name we, we took a while to land on, but I'm very happy with it. We've got a bunch of good Shovel Knight people here today, and we're going to go over Shovel Knight speed tech, quick kills, general tutorial stuff. If you'd like to get into running Shovel Knight or just learn more about the speed run in general, that's what we're going to be doing here today, and I hope you all will enjoy it. But before we get into that... Just a quick reminder that SGQ 2021 online is July 4th through the 11th. The games list is out and prize submissions are open. So if you'd like to submit something to help out with SGDQ 2021 online, you can go to gamesdonequick.com. There's information about submitting prizes there on the front page. Of course, Frame Fatales, the all-women speedrunning event, will be returning in August with the 15th to the 21st with Flame Fatales. Game submissions will be opening up for that soon on May 18th and running through the 25th. You can see all the rest of the dates at gamesdonequick.com slash frame fatales. And if you're interested in Hotfix, which is this series of shows we run in between our events, highlighting speedruns and other speedrunning content, you can go to gamesdonequick.com slash hotfix to see more on that. And if you tune in tomorrow, we've got a Golden Sun race uh, with the top four runners of the game are going to duke it out. It'll be a lot of fun. That'll be starting at noon. If you want to see that. And of course, Golden Sun is going to be featured in SGQ 2021. So it'll be a nice little preview of what you might see during the marathon there. But today we've got Mumu, Akai, we've got Tolu, and we've got Magic Madman all here with us to help break down the blue man, as the community calls him. So uh, how are you all doing today? Pretty good. Yeah, pretty fine. Why don't you guys do right. a quick intro so people know what voice goes to who? When we start uh, with I'm, Mumu, I'm Mumu Akai. Uh, I'm Magic Manman. I'm Tolu. Thank you, everybody. And what's the general rundown for today? What, were we, what all are we going to cover for people who are new to Shovel Knight? So what the idea was for this uh, for this pitch was... A lot of a lot of feedback that I got after I did the Spectre Knight run. Um, one comment that specifically stuck out in my mind was, "Hey, those bosses all have twenty hits worth of health, and they just died in two seconds. What even happened?" <laughs> and that's that's what happens with all the bosses uh, for all the characters. They all typically die really, really quickly. Um, and it's one of the things that draws me to this game more than anything else is just. It looks like a really basic platformer, like a really straightforward thing. And it is casually, it is absolutely super easy to pick up and play and enjoy. Uh, but then the the amount of depth in this game, the amount of uh, skill, like how high the skill ceiling is for this game uh, is truly phenomenal. And I, I would love more than anything to be able to uh, break down exactly how much effort is going into the tricks that are in these in this speed run. <clears throat> Yeah, and that's why I'm sitting here on uh, this this screen here with King Knight and his ten gallon hat. <laughs> <laughs> Explain what's happening on this screen. <laughs> so uh, uh, King Knight doesn't look like his usual self. I don't know, man. I think he looks really good like this. We're not actually going to be showing off King Knight today, but um, I love Yacht Club games. They are a very fun group of people, and uh, they put in so many awesome cosmetic things. This is one of the things that we're going to be kind of going over in terms of, like, things you can do in this video. There's so many things that you can do in this video game uh, that people don't really know about. Um, and what we are going... This is not a paid advertisement for Arby's. Arby's is pretty cool, though. Uh, I think my favorite part about the Arby's patch is that the Arby's patch broke our training tools for a little while. <laughs> That's not something I ever expected to say. Uh, so something I'm kind of uh, starting up with, which, uh, what even was my cheat code for this? Pick a color. Pick a color that you like. Just shoot it out there real quick. Uh, green. I mean, pink. Uh, I said it work? first. <laughs> <laughs> Real good show, not yours. Okay, so Fine. if I go um, into the Shovel Knight server, we actually have pinned in uh, the general channel a list of a bunch of cheat codes that change your armor color. And my favorite pink one is, uh, let's see, there's AN Thick or AN Bros. AN Bros is the one that you saw. Actually, I'll go with AN Bros. And yes, I'm just, that's what it looks like. Cool. 
So this cheat code is completely cosmetic. Um, you can put your name in afterwards if you really want to. Uh, you can also, for Shovel Knight, activate body swap so you can change uh, the genders and pronouns of the characters. Um, again, Yacht Club, they're, they they love the community and they just throw in more and more flavorful things all the time. And, uh... GG does! <laughs> <laughs> oh my god. Uh, and I put in the uh, updated cheat code. Um, Speed Frog actually just dropped the old name for the cheat code. There was, they used to be like really garbled and hard to say. Uh, now they're all kind of like easy to remember. <clears throat> so cheat codes, yeah. I know some of them can be used during the speedrun. What's the rule for the community if you want to use cheat codes like for cosmetics? If you want to, and we encourage this, if you want to uh, add some personal style to your speedrun, um, so long as it does not change the silhouette of your character or provide any visual aid, like there's um, cheat codes that give your character uh, the gold armor effect. Uh, but because that's really sparkly and it actually lets you see your character in the dark rooms, it would kind of give you an edge to use that. Uh, so we don't allow that one. There's this really terrifying one for King Knight that changes his face into like the final boss's face. And you're not allowed to use that one. Uh, even if uh, we allowed silhouettes, I'm personally against it. I'm just going to make my stand right here. I don't want that cheat code in any speedruns. Just because um, it's gross to look at? You don't like it? <laughs> <laughs> it's really terrifying. Uh, it's really awful, honestly. Uh, and it does change the shape of uh, King Knight's silhouette. So, uh, again, okay. anything that would change that would be a little bit of a help. Color is completely fine. Um, and color is actually also an accessibility thing, if, if that matters for you. But from here, if I wanted to just keep making practice files, I would just copy this over here. And then anytime I wanted to start a run, I would just choose yes, okay, bad run, reset, copy. Good to go all over again. <clears throat> there are also some categories exclusive to cheat codes, like uh, God Mode uh, runs. Yeah. Which gives you a bunch of extra power. Uh, God Mode is actually one of my favorite speed runs. Uh, and later on, I'm going to be using a different cheat code that will actually uh, give me all of my tools. Um, so they're also perfectly fine for practicing. There's but, also, uh, if you go back and you look at the community spotlight when we had Shovel Knight showcase on, Moo Moo did a run of the three times size sprite of Shovel Knight, which oh is much God. harder than you'd think it would be. <laughs> I have done Just... probably 50 categories for Shovel Knight speedrunning, uh, and they have mostly been uh, memorable, but a lot of them were awful, like uh, one that makes the game <laughs> run three times faster. Oh no. Uh, and the assumption when we did that race was, oh, three times faster? Okay, so we'll do three characters in 15 minutes each, right? It took us... The uh, the same amount of time like as any percent for Shovel Knight is like 45 minutes. It took us 45 minutes with the game running at three times speed because you just have no control of the character. <laughs> yeah. All right, whenever <laughs> you are ready to get started, I think we're right. good to go. So I'll count it down, and then when I get in there, I'm just going to start explaining stuff. Uh, but this is basically... The format of this is going to be... We're going to do an any percent run. We're going to stop periodically uh, and explain anything that we have prepared. We have a lot of footage to explain what's going on. If you have any question at all about what we just did, stop us and we'll go back and explain it. Yeah. Uh, but yeah, I'll get back. I'll get in there right now and I'll count it down. Three, two, one, go. So Shovel Knight, as far as a, a character goes, um, his basic toolkit is the ability to jump move and attack. Um, I'm going to get to the next room, but this is just so you can see what like basic Shovel Knight movement looks like. This is what every any percent and low percent run starts out like, and 100%, I guess. Um, it's a it's a very fun and han well-handling platformer. Uh, you just saw me doing some pogoing. Pogoing um, is whenever you hold down in the air, you enter this stance and allows you to bounce off of uh, enemies and, uh, and some hazards. I'm going to try and go through this room with a setup. That's fine. I'm going to be trying to do a lot of stuff that is uh, fairly difficult. And uh, I also have a practice tool that I'm going to show off in a second. First, I'm going to get on the other side of this guy. And now I'm going to start explaining some other stuff. So in this game, Yacht Club actually patched this in. This is a, this was originally a glitch on, on Sony consoles, I believe. Uh, hmm. And it made its way onto PC, and then we just... They, they kept it in on PC, which is really, really awesome. You can double bind uh, your abilities. So I actually have left bound, 
to left on the on the D-pad and left on the on the analog stick. Uh, and the same thing for right. I also have jump and attack double down. And what that means is if I press the, um, for me it's the circle button, uh, then I will jump and attack at the same time. That's a useful hotkey. Uh, that's useful for a bunch of tricks. And then I can also hold left and right at the same time. If I do that, I move to the left, but I attack to the right. And the reason why that's useful is in this next frame. I'm going uh, to show off real quick. This is our training tool. This is called S Trainer. And with this, I can actually set up coordinates to teleport around. So I'm going to set my current position. And then if I load the stage, for example, it'll bring me right back to the beginning of the level. If I hit F1, it'll load me exactly where I was before. Uh, that means in this guy's hitbox. Uh, I can do a whole bunch of stuff with it. But I'm going to actually try in this next room. Uh, you can see whenever I hit something, it, it knocks Shovel Knight pretty far back. This is a strategy for like really top level runners, and this is the kind of stuff that you're going to see in this. Sorry, run. can you repeat try that? And... I, uh, I went to the wrong scene. That's fine. Yeah. <laughs> um, basically, uh, there's a lot of knockback whenever you hit something with your shovel, and since we don't really have a lot of movement options right now, uh, I'm going to use that knockback to give me a little bit of a boost, uh, and this is really only possible if you're holding left and right at the same time. Ah, it's really hard to get the distance for it, but. That's actually something that um, Smoggy and Applesauce, the two top runners, go for. Uh, that's way easier on keyboard. I'm doing this on a... Let me remove S Trainer so you can see. Uh, I'm doing this on, on my controller here by holding left and right on the stick at the same time. That's really awkward on controller. It's much, much easier on keyboard, but it is possible uh, to do on, uh, on a controller. And that's got its uses here and there. I just wanted to, like, go over some stuff like that. And then the next thing I'm going to be going over is uh, Dirt Mountain. Um, I'm going to set up my coordinates right here with S Trainer. Make sure. So for me, uh, I'm using one of my shoulder to, to to press left and right at the same time. Ah, uh, you have it bound to a shoulder button. Yeah, I do yeah. it like this because I have uh, relic swaps bound to my shoulder buttons. So I actually, I'll go over my other controller layout so, uh... stuff later. You said you're setting your coordinates real quick. Is that like just getting a lineup perk for your what you're about to do, or? So in this room, uh, I'll actually show it off. See this dragon that's moving around. Yeah. Um, if you go through this room nonstop, like full speed, um, it's very likely the dragon is going to hit you. Uh, and so when I set my coordinates outside of this room, it's so that when I reload to practice, all I have to do is walk into the room and practice as normal. If I set my coordinates in the room, the dragon would already be moving. So yeah. for practice purposes. I just do that, and then I'm off and going. And, ah, I got hit. But this this tool is really, really useful for, for practicing the game. And I highly recommend that if you can and have the availability to, that you'll play on PC. So I was able to get underneath it. Not the perfect way of getting through, but this is I'm going to be showing off stuff and then kind of moving on. So this is the uh, jump and attack button. Now you could do this with or without the double binding button. This is with the double binding button. This is just me pressing it. Um, and you can just mash it and go straight through this mount. This is not what most people do casually. They'll just swing, go, swing, go. And the reason why we um, always try and be airborne with Shovel Knight is because he has that startup to his movement. Whenever he swings and attacks, he stops. He can't move during this. But you can jump cancel out of it immediately. So by doing this, you just get to nonstop move forward and, and go straight through. Uh, a lot of things, actually, enemies and uh, and dirt. Well, listen, I'm gonna keep going up. Oh, so what's like, up? Uh, you did an interesting hitbox with the bubble there. Uh, is that how does it, like bouncing off things work? Um, I'm gonna go right back to it because you sort of and... like bounced off the side of that bubble. I got dirt man the second time. Uh, the hitbox of, of the pogo is really generous. All so, I do is hold yeah. down and right. It's it's mm -hmm. that easy for this room. Um, yeah. It's so gigantic to be able to hit this thing. <laughs> yeah. Like the hit uh, marker is way off to the left of the bubble when you do that. That's actually specifically going to come up way, way later in the tower stage because uh, you can actually determine when you um, start doing your shovel drop and that's going to determine whether or not you hit something because it's got a gigantic hitbox in it. Okay. So now I'm going to go up to the uh, the most infamous trick um, in the uh, in the first stage. This trick um, is so popular for the speedrun that the devs actually had to not make it a glitch. They had to make it like a thing that you... It's more like a secret now. 
um, because originally, if you did this, uh, you wouldn't get a sound effect. Now there's like a whooshy sound effect and sparkles and stuff. It's actually really cool. Um, this is the bubble wrap. So directly above me, there's a room that I'm going to be going to. This dragon is firing out some bubbles, and I'm going to be using those bubbles to touch the screen transition while I'm like off screen, and that would put me in like the death plane of the room above me if I did that. However, if you do it properly, um, you go up into this room because the camera is like, well, you're not supposed to be out of bounds, so it just pushes you into the correct room. It's really weird, and the way I'm going to set that up is uh, if you look at the background, you can see at the tip of my shovel, there is a cross in the background. It's really hard to see, yep. but there is a, a cross in the little rock uh, surface behind me. I'm going to... <laughs> I'm going to jump as Shovel Knight is passing this. Specifically because you can see uh, this dragon fires at bubbles and then maybe sometimes walks. Um, and it's really, really slow. Uh, if you do this without this setup, it takes three movements like that to get into position. So I'm going to do this in hopefully just two movements. Oh, too far to the left. Actually, I was going to set up my cord right here. That's, I think that's too far to the left. Yeah. Okay. What are you trying to aim for when you say you're too far to the left? Like, what are you looking for? I'm trying to hit that dirt block just barely. And if I do it right, nice, the dragon only breathes bubbles twice, and then you can get back up here. And then I'm waiting for the bubbles to line up with the grass in the background. Pogo, pogo. Whoosh. And it seems like an absolute madman theory is just like, what are you guys doing? No, 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 trust me, it works. <laughs> all these visual cues, all these tiny little setups and things, that's how we do these tricks. So I'm actually going to show off now. I'm going to pause this, go to... Where is... So, like, how, how difficult is that? Just, like, if you breeze the bubbles in the right spot and you bounce off those bubbles, you have to be at, like, a particular height? Yes. It's very, very, very precise. You have to be in a specific spot for all of this to work. So I'm going to go... I have this you, you down. You you could do it actually very slowly, just waiting up uh, for the bubbles to come to you. It works, but you're losing time, obviously. Mm -hmm. Yeah, this trick but... only saves about five seconds for Shovel Knight um, because of how long it takes to set up versus going around manually. So I'm I'm waiting for the bubbles to line up. You can see uh, I this is my visual cue. I wait for you can see my mouse. Um, the bubbles, I want them to line up with this grassy patch here. Some people use this cloud, and what you're doing is you're jumping and pulling off of, doesn't matter where on this bubble, but specifically, I'm going to try and pause it on the frame. On the left side of this bubble, you can see this little bit of dirt that's from the pogo, and if you pogo it on the left side of that bubble, when you hit the screen transition, whoosh, there you go. <laughs> And that's not particularly hard to do. It's the it's the lining it up with the um let me see. Why is that? I'll go back. Um if I were just to enter this room and just do this, you'll see that whoops. Just pogoing here, the the dragon breathes multiple bubbles before you actually get the chance to go up here. And you always want to make sure that you're destroying this top right bubble so that you can set this trick up. And this is, they programmed that in because if you do that wrong, um, you soft lock the game. You actually can't pause during that transition. And people saw like Muncha and Smoggy doing speed runs on GDQ and were like, oh, that's cool. I'm going to do that. And then they were reporting, hey, Yacht Club, uh, my game broke. So Yacht Club was like, oh, we don't want to remove the trick from the speed run. So they, they did us the favor of making it canon, essentially. So now I'm going to do the Black Knight fight. And uh, for this fight, the this is the only boss that behaves like this in this game, where it's like the player character. Um, it has knockback and iframes. Every other boss will be fought a different way. Uh, but I will be able to stunlock Black Knight, and I'm going to be... Uh, was that a delayed pogo? Sorry, I want to make sure I'm answering chat here. Um, that is a slightly delayed pogo, yes, because if you just... Um, if you just pogo the bubble as soon as possible, uh, you will not be able to hit the, the specific height you need for that screen transition. So for this Black Knight fight, uh, I'm going to be aiming for his forehead because that's the best visual cue to keep him stunlocked. I'm gonna just go ahead and do the fight. Uh, it's not a terrible, terribly difficult fight the first time around, but it will be much harder later on. Like 
can see I'm just jumping to cancel the animation of me swinging my shovel, and then I'm pogoing to finish because your your hitbox is always active for the pogo. So I'm gonna go ahead and show the fight off in slightly slower motion, so it's a little bit easier. The whole point of this, um, the whole point of this show is because I want people to be able to see what's going on and not just wonder how things are done. Let me make sure you can see this. So you can see I'm aiming for Black Knight's forehead and then I'm jumping out of the remaining animation of the swing. And you just keep them pinned like this in the corner. A lot of people come into the community asking, how do you stunlock Black Knight? How do you stunlock Black Knight? This is how you do it. It's not super hard to pick up doing this fight, um, but it does require some practice. And using the practice tool as trainer does make this a lot easier because you can just warp straight here. So you're just jumping as soon as you can after the, the shovel swing and then yeah. hitting the, the forehead? Yeah, I'm actually going to show a little bit of that off um, in a second. There's going to be a, the, the dream sequence, but you don't have to do this one. Um, You're this on is... the wrong screen oh, of something right that, now? That's fine, that's fine. Okay. So this is um, the campfire. This happens every time you beat the beat a stage, but you don't have to do any of them except for after you beat each world. So what I'm showing here is um, if I try and move after, like I'm holding right after I, I swing. You see I can't move right away, mm -hmm. um, but you can jump out of that and you can immediately move. In fact, you can jump so early you don't even see the swing. So a lot of Shovel Knight combat is involving staying in the air and attacking like this on the way up and on the way down, and then you're just not ever letting the animation of you on the ground slow you down. Uh, put out forest fires. <laughs> oh, another thing that I, I'm going to mention right here real quick. I actually have L1 bound as my uh, pause button, and that's because in the village... Um, there's a dialogue box that you get with uh, someone before you have to leave. So I like to have L1 bound so that I can talk to him, hold left, and then jump at the same time. It's just a lot more comfortable for my hand. And it also helps you with mashing through dialogue to have two star buttons. So that was planes. Do you have any questions before I move on? Yeah, yeah. Why are you always jumping after a ladder or after the, the log in the camp? Or... Just right now in the village. Yes, you're always jumping so that you can start moving at full acceleration. Um, because from a dead standstill, like whenever you just start a level, or from the tops of ladders, um, you you have to start accelerating to, to go fast. So jumping just immediately brings you to full speed. So that's the first level. Uh, now I'm going to be showing off uh, Pride More Keep. And in this first room, I'm going to be trying to move really quickly to get under these lava cycles. There's some lava pots in the room. It's not too hard. Yo, 11 gold. <laughs> the, most <laughs> nice. dig, the most you can dig out of a single dig from the dig piles. So I should just make an certain meme category. Oh, that was close. Okay. Uh, one of the best meme categories. So uh, this trick is uh, gentle hop. In this next screen, I can't jump high enough to make it over here. I'm going to set my S trainer coordinates for Pride More Keep and right here. Okay. So you see that I can't jump high enough to make it over here. But that happens in the speed run. Why? It's because of gentle hop. And if you do it correctly, nice, make it up here. So what this is, is I'm pressing jump and attack at the same time. And then during the screen transition, I'm just holding jump. That's all you need to be able to do the trick. And what I think is happening, I think the game is adding your jump height to like you in a grounded position. So I think the game thinks that you're on the ground and it's just adding your jump height to your current position. And there's a little pair of like, there's three dots on this hill. That's my visual cue for this one is when I pass that, press jump and attack. You have to be kind of close to the screen transition, but not too close, otherwise you don't get high enough. And let's just show this again real quick. I believe that's the only instance in which uh, that trick is actually used, actually. It's you can... It's interesting, because like, it could also be preserving your momentum on the screen transition like more than it should be. Could be I, another I really, potential explanation. I really don't know what specifically it is. I just I think it's hilarious, and like it could be any number of those things. 
Um, but it's only useful here, and you can use it for the Spectre Knight fight, but it's not necessary for that fight. So this is so, the only place you really use it in Shovel Knight? Yes! Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Shoutouts to Mr. Gentle who found it. That's why we call it the Gentle Hop. So you can see into the screen transition doing jump and attack. And then from here, I'd only be holding attack. Or only be holding jump. And that gives you enough height to just barely make it up over this ledge. It's such a silly little trick, but like it does save time and it is used in the run. Did I... Okay, yeah. Going back and forth between gameplay and and the and the media player is a little tricky. <clears throat> Oops. I'm doing really good. Yeah, everything's fine. Yeah, so intermittently between like explaining stuff, I'm going to be trying to do an any percent speed run. Um, and I will be talking about like what is the any percent speed run right now? So currently, um, any percent does not get a lot of uh, items. It does get the alchemy coin as its weapon of choice, but that's more of a movement tool than um, than actually like uh, something for combat. Although it can be, if you want to pick up this speed run, some people will get the flare wand, which is in the next room. Um, it does cost you a thousand gold, I believe. Um, but it's very slow to go into that room and, and get the player one. Oh, right. I have to remember to do this left, right, right here. Nice! Very small time saves all over the place. That's the thing that you explained at the start, where you, like, you move a left and attacking right at the same time? Yeah, and I'm holding um, left and right on my D-pad and analog stick to do that. Mm -hmm. So, a lot of these rooms, not particularly noteworthy, so I'm just kind of going through them. Um, but yeah, for any percent, um, you would only be getting um, a weapon of your choice. Uh, the Flare Wand, the Chaos Orb, neither of those, which we call Neatherless, or you'd be getting the Alchemy Coin. I'm going to be going for a very fast cycle in this room that involves a damage boost. And then we'll be at the next thing that I want to explain. Okay, nice. Just barely making it into that pot. So I guess the question is, um... Nice. While you're moving through some of these rooms, why come to King Knight stage? Because I think you have a choice between two stages here, right? Yes. So we do King Knight stage um, because the Chaos Orb costs, I believe, 2,500 gold or 2,400. Uh, you would need the money from this stage to be able to purchase the Chaos Orb. Um, you can pick up the Flare Wand immediately if you go to Pride More, and you can actually use it on King Knight uh, on Spectre Knight. So the route that you would do is typically always going to be Plains Pride more uh, Lich Yard. So you get the Flare Wand, um, and then you use it for Spectre Knight, or you get the money from this stage, go pick up the Chaos Orbs. In terms of what saves the most time, you get neither of those weapons, but they make the game significantly easier. And when you're picking up this game, we want you to have fun. Uh, if you feel like the Flare Wand really helps you out in combat, just, just grab it. If you feel like the Chaos Orbs make you that much more likely to finish a run, do it, you know? Just have fun with the game. <clears throat> so the next thing I want to show off is uh, there uh, is... Wait. Oh, what's up? Uh, I just want to say, in this route, none of those items matter, but it's still faster to do this stage first just to save time on uh, menuing on the map screen. Yes, yeah. it, it would save a little bit of time. You're right. Um, so the next thing I wanted to talk about is uh, whenever you hit an enemy in this game, like if I just run up to this griffin, I'm just going to take damage from it. If I try and pogo over this griffin, I won't be able to do either because its face is in the way. If you deal damage to it, whenever you deal damage to any enemy in this game, it temporarily does not have contact like a, like a hitbox on it. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to hit it with my shovel and then pogo while it has those uh, frames disabled. Which is a very small time save, um, but it, I think the other way of going through this is like you can t <laughs> I think they like barely land on this thing and you could do that like that's kind of slow I remember that being a thing but uh yeah if you if you ever inside of a an enemy's hitbox but you just hit it um you can stay inside of it and that does a, that does reward you for being very aggressive in combat so now I'm gonna go for the the king knight quick kill and I'm just gonna try and go for it before I explain it um because it is quite challenging. Damn. 
not the best. So I'm just gonna kill him and then start it over again, because I want to try and get a better looking fight before I explain it. There we go, that's much better. Cool. So, what's going on in this fight, and King Knight lost 20 health in approximately 6 or 7 seconds. Um... The fastest way of dealing damage is usually just swinging your shovel, but because King Knight is flying up to the ceiling, uh, you can pogo and fly up with him, which does deal damage every time. Uh, it's like a like a half second between hits that you can do on him. You can also practice this fight in challenge mode, which is one of the few fights that does have like that luxury to it. So for this fight, you're going to see me swinging and then pogoing off of him, and because of the ceiling. I fall down much faster, which makes this fight kind of possible. And then it's one, two, three, four on the left, pushing me to the right with two more pogos that bonk into the ceiling. One more time on the right side, one, two, three, four, pogo, pogo, one, two, three. And look, he's, he's basically dead. He only has two hits left at this point. So that's this just, is, uh, you know, swinging your sword, your shovel precisely and bouncing to get fast hits. Yes, because you normally like a lot of people would just do pogos on King Knight like casually, um, but so long as you're hitting him, you can actually stay right inside of his hitbox. Mm -hmm. And the timing is tricky, but. It's something that, like, I picked up within my first two weeks of learning this game. If you just sit down and grind it out. And it, practicing the combat makes you a much better player in general for the game. So, like, when I got into the community, I saw the King Knight fight. I was like, that's amazing compared to, like, what I did casually. I'm going to go and practice that for a while. And that improved my time significantly. So ideally, do you not want to take any contact damage from him, or are any of those hits intentional? Yeah, you can you can do that fight without taking any damage whatsoever. In fact, there's an even harder version of that fight that's really, really dumb, um, where you do... I think we call it a yo-what. <laughs> where you're... <laughs> Shoutouts to Munch of Koopas. Um, you pogo swing pogo on an enemy on the way up, and it only works on King Knight and Spectre Knight because of how tall Spectre Knight is because of King Knight going upwards. Uh, it's really sick, but it's also really, really dumb hard to do. So it's not something that, like, we would go for the 80% run. So the last last stage here in um, in World 1 is uh, the Lich Yard. And there are just a handful of things that I'm going to be showing off in this stage. So it's going to be mostly smooth sailing. Um, frogs are completely RNG. Uh, they are one of the more annoying enemies to deal with. Uh, <laughs> uh, they always tend to uh, hop towards you, but sometimes they'll like, I don't know, freak out and they'll jump in the opposite direction for some reason, but yeah, that's the, like the only thing that they do that's like quote-unquote consistent. So like when you say RNG, like the timing of their jumps? The timing of their jumps and how high their ju they jump is completely random. Oh, I am okay. And also if they electrify themselves and jump. Yeah, <laughs> yeah right. Random. So in this room, um, if you were playing casually, you'd probably do this. That's fine. If you want to go fast, the easier way of doing this uh, is you run into this uh, frog, take damage, you disturb it from its sleep, and it'll hop up a little bit, and then you do a delayed pogo, and you'll make it up here. You would not normally be able to make it up there. So if I were to just try and pogo off of this frog, I won't get the height that I need. And then Applesauce found this setup where if I do a jump, I think right around here, I can do this without taking damage. I'm going to go for it a couple times, so it's really, really difficult. Oh, I don't think I've seen this. Ooh, I got it. Nice. I, I fell back down, but like you did see it. That is <laughs> just another way to save a little bit of time in this run. I'm going to keep moving along, try and focus on the, uh, the next far more ridiculous trick uh, that has been getting implemented into any percent. Tull, you want to tell me about that? <laughs> Wait, what trick? Dark Beetle Skip. Oh, yeah, that one. Uh, 
So yeah, the one of the gimmicks in this stage is that some of the rooms are completely pitch black, except for um, sometimes there's, there's lightning that strikes and you can momentarily see what the room looks like. Uh, this next room, I believe, is the first... Oh wait, no, it's the second dark room. But yeah, there's this beetle in this uh, this next room. And you can actually bring it all the way to the right side of the screen. And, Got it! Uh, pull off of it. <laughs> nice. What the heck? Because, you know, this room isn't hard enough. <laughs> so you're juggling yeah. that beetle in the dark? Yes. Yeah, yeah. Over and there's the spikes. spikes. There, yeah, there's spikes that instantly kill you. Can, yeah, you can see them down there. I, I hate that trick. Smoggy goes for this, uh, and I believe Applesauce would. Applesauce tends to go for some very difficult stuff as well. I don't! I learned so many tricks just for this showcase, and I hate this. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, the the other way of doing that room is just taking the, the platform to the left. I mean, that trick, I think, only saves, like, I believe two seconds or so. It's really not all that much. It's maybe uh, one second optimally. I think it's less uh, than two seconds, yeah. Oh, okay. So now I'm going to be heading over to uh, Spectre Knight and uh, don't really have anything planned, so if you just see me doing anything, go ahead and let me know. Otherwise, I'm just kind of heading over. Uh, I don't think we really, we really explain how the platforms work. So the, the platforms that are made of uh, the skeletons, uh, they only go down if they have uh, two things on them. So the player counts as one thing and enemies also count. But the uh, the skulls that you can actually hit around and stuff, uh, those also count as well. Okay. Kind of was a little bit terrified. I almost fell into the abyss. So here's the other spot where you can do gentle hop. If you gentle hop here, you actually end up on the top platform. Uh, this technically doesn't save you a ton of time because of the way the fight works. Um, you would normally be below, and you would be jumping as soon as the fight starts to get up here and then hit Spectre Knight as soon as possible. If I hit Spectre Knight too early, he'll actually travel back and forth twice. Isn't Wasn't this game a roguelike a few years ago? No fix for it. No, this game was never a roguelike. Um, they will be doing... Uh, it's called Shovel Knight Dig that does have random elements, uh, but I wouldn't really call that a roguelike. Um, so anyway, <clears throat> here's the Spectre Knight fight. I'm going to hope for good RNG, try and keep him uh, locked in the corner. This is another good fight if you want to practice combat, uh, because Spectre Knight will always teleport to the bottom left here. So I'm waiting for him to pick up closer, hit him back, take damage with the Scythe. One, two, three, four, five, six, Pogo. Lost eight hits already. One, two, three, four, RNG. Bad RNG, so I'm going to have to do the backup kill. One, two. One, two, three, four, five, six. There we go. So that's the backup for uh, the fight. Um, I'm going to bring up the footage now so you can see what this fight is supposed to look like. That fight with bad RNG only loses five seconds. And sometimes you just keep getting bad RNG. I, some people keep count. Yeah, Smuggy <laughs> kept the count. Smuggy had like a 50 win streak for bad RNG on Spectre. <laughs> win streak in quotes. Yes. So you do so much damage to him when he teleports here the first time? Yes, I'm going to show that off right here. So, one, two, three, four, five, six, and then on that last one, you're just pogoing, you barely get him before he disappears. And then he comes back over, and you carefully, you stay on the right side so that you can actually juggle him without him flying through you. Uh, fix the media player a little bit. Yeah, Kenny in chat asking uh, about any practice tools. We've shown it once already. There's S Trainer for Shovel Knight. Yeah, I will. I will bring up that practice tool right now so you can see it where it is. It should be right here. So this is S Trainer, and if I just have uh, basically, you can see the way it works is uh, I can pick what stage I want to go to. There's so many stages that I could possibly warp to. I'm going to hold off on on warping right now so you can see that but uh, you can warp anywhere you want you can set your coordinates if you press f2 you warp straight to the boss you can change your health values um and pressing f7 is what changes what level you load to f1 changes where if you warp to a specific location or not 
and I will show off some of that in just a moment. But uh, let me see, where was I? On the video. Yeah, this is just the finish. You can see him with good RNG, he ends up in the bottom left corner instead of in the bottom right corner. And you can just finish him off before he even gets away. So a very nice quick kill. I highly recommend if you're going to practice um, like learning how to play Shovel Knight, do the King Knight or Spectre Knight or Polar Knight quick kills. They will make you very good at this character. So, so one question Black is... for this quick kill. What's the purpose of the damage boost you take from the scythe? Uh, let me remove the video player and go to the game. Uh, by the way, S Trainer is kind enough to drop you off before this room in case you want to gentle hop into this room. Uh, so if I didn't damage boost and I were to just try and hit him, I would get hit by the Scythe. Because if I just try and stay over here, the Scythe is going to hit me. And then I wouldn't be able to get as much damage off on him. Uh -huh, okay. So you take, you take that hit up front, that way you have total uptime on, on damaging him. Just so you can get into the body with the iframes without taking a hit, basically? Yeah. I should probably kill this guy now that I reset him, brought him back to life. Yes. <laughs> uh, that's fine. I know how to deal with all his attacks. Cool. He's dead. Get wrecked, nerd. <clears throat> and uh, the reason why... Going... I... Oh, go ahead. Uh, going into the body of enemies is not disturbing if you are attacking constantly the enemies because uh, their hitbox is disabled when they take a hit. Mm -hmm. But the, the sight of a Spectre will still hit you in the corner. So to make that work, you have to make sure you're getting the hits in perfect timing, otherwise you'll get hit by Spectre Knight? Yeah, if you're not attacking fast enough, you'll get hit by him. So you need to make sure you're practicing good uh, shovel canceling. So here's the dream sequence. Um, in this dream sequence, your goal is to die as quickly as possible, and Shovel Knight has four hearts, which are eight hits. If I get hit by a raised sword from the Skelebro, it deals a whole heart of damage. So you're trying to dance with these guys and make sure you, you only take um, full hearts from them. You want to make sure you land under Shield Knight. I think I'm too far to the right. You'll hear a ting. Okay, cool. I landed underneath her. Shovel Knight's body, although he's dead, is technically higher up off the ground, and that means that I caught her, so it's like the tiniest little time save. And if you want to pick up a, a meal ticket, it's there. You can go back to the village. But yeah, that's the uh, that's the dream sequence. So that's World 1. And before I hand it off to Magic Madman, I'm going to be doing Lost City, and I'm going to be showing off some of the dumbest tricks you could possibly go for <laughs> in this speedrun. <laughs> this is the best one. Oh, right. Um, to show off uh, S-Trainer real quick, because I want you all to be able to see how powerful this tool is. Um, you cannot go to, like... Uh, a lot of people are like, oh man, I wish I could play this stage as this knight, like King Knight stages or Spectre Knight stages as Shovel Knight. Well, with this you can. So if you really want to break the game and um, you cannot hold Yacht Club accountable, uh, here's uh, Shovel Knight in one of King Knight stages. And you probably can't finish the stage. Uh, you definitely can't finish the stage. Okay. But that's you to show you how powerful. It. It's just, just to show you how powerful the uh, practice tool is. This is forbidden technology. Forbidden content. Don't do this. <laughs> uh, yeah, the the game usually breaks really easily if you uh, go into a scripted sequence with a character that you're not supposed to. Yeah. You so might I'm be gonna... missing some uh, dialogues with uh, NPCs, and it breaks the game. Yeah. Okay, make sure I am in the blocks so that whenever I respawn, uh, whenever you're in a stone block, um, you actually still have full movement. So if I press F1 right now, you're going to see Shovel Knight in the stone blocks, uh, but I'll fall straight through them. This is so I can practice Beetle 1. <clears throat> So this is a uh, quote unquote the easy strat. I'm gonna stand over here, line myself up, get my foot off the uh, ground, and then when Bodo comes over, go 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 go. Okay, cool. I made it. Thank you, Steve. Nice. So. That is, uh, that's Beetle Skip. You can see that we would still be waiting on this Beetle otherwise to, to make it across this gap. I am now going to go for, uh, 
Jimmy's strat. This is the worst thing ever. Mm. I have to do a pixel and frame perfect jump off of the corner of a sand block. Ha! Ah! I'm gonna try this a couple more times. <laughs> if I get it, I'm gonna scream. <laughs> Moomoo is serious, by the way. Yeah! I'm streaming. <laughs> yep. <laughs> no! I don't have to... Okay, okay oh, I got you're... the hard part. So I'm happy. <laughs> but oh. doing that jump is so dumb. And I'm so glad someone found that was like, hey, this is faster. Cool. I'm not going for it. I'm going for it, actually. Yeah, and Madman goes for it, living up to your name. Uh. Uh, try and find the footage that I have for this. Uh, this is the phase locker one. I'll show that one off afterwards. Okay. <clears throat> so, <laughs> it's not Moomoo Moo without the screaming. That's right. <laughs> so you do a backwards damage boost, and then after breaking this sand block, you wait for this uh, Steve to bounce off the block, and then you are doing a pixel and uh, frame-perfect jump to not bonk off of this and just barely jump off of this and you make it over this gap. And if you make it over the gap, congratulations. That's the that's the hard part. Uh, but you have to get rid of this dirt block so that uh, Steve can actually make it across the uh, the room. As you can see, Steve passing through where that dirt block was. So if you don't destroy that, you don't get to do the rest of this trick. And then from here on, you're just kind of barely keeping up with Steve. Steve moves like just about as fast as you do, uh, but you can outrun him, and you would end up falling to your death if you don't do that precisely. So why is he named Steve? Uh, that's the lore. <laughs> oh, really? Okay. <laughs> all birders right. are named. All birders are named Steve. It's not just that one, but that one's that one's Steve. Is that one Steve Prime? Must be Steve Prime. Actually, it was even better when King Knight was released and we found out that one of the bosses was a birder. We were like, that's Steve's dad. It's got to be. <laughs> yeah, um, my split name for, for this stage is uh, Steve. <laughs> so let me see if I can find the 100% variation of this trick. Uh, that is with the phase locket. Way back when, in any percent, you used to grab the phase locket. <clears throat> and um, what this trick is, is it's not necessarily harder let me make sure you guys can see this it's not necessarily harder just a different type of hard you're using the phase locket to pause yourself in the air that's resetting your fall speed so you don't even need steve for this trick and you just barely have the magic to do this what a fantastic uh trick in a video game so now I'm going to make my way over to the next thing. Let me get rid of uh, S Trainer. Oh my god. David TKI with the puns in chat. You actually fight Steven? Oh my god. <laughs> of course. Yes, that is David TKI. Would not be David without puns. Um, that money is not in a great spot. And uh, if you lose your money, the only way to really get it back is to exit the stage. Oh god! I'm dead. Uh, but thankfully, S Trainer does allow you to uh, cheat in your money. So if you're just practicing, you can just use S Trainer to make sure you have enough money. Don't you need the magic later? Um, you for for any percent, you used to just need that magic right then and there, and it wouldn't matter otherwise. Um, but now that is that's still the strat for 100 percent, and that magic is accounted for. You do get magic refills later on. So again, doing the regular any percent strat, and then I'm just going to keep moving from here. I'm going to go over to the dust knuckle. So the Dust Knuckle is technically um, going to be the first weapon you pick up otherwise. And uh, it is a very, very good weapon. Um, it only costs two magic to use. Uh, and it gives you invincibility while you have it, uh, while you are using it. Um, it also goes through enemies uh, and dirt blocks. So it's a really great movement tool. And that is specifically actually one of the, the biggest uses of it. Um, Madman is going to be really demonstrating the uh, the might of the dust knuckle. Oh, you will as well. Just a little bit. 
So here's where you pick it up. It costs 3,000 gold. Make sure you have this amount when you come and get this item. I love that Roma you... animation. <laughs> it's really cute. There's so much charm in this game. So now I'm just going to be gathering up as much money as I can. Is there anything special and... about how those bounce physics work, by the way? Is there anything people should be aware of? Um, no, it's pretty standard bouncing. No, nothing really crazy about it. Um, but there is um, a little, there's a neat little thing I can do in a second. I'm gonna try and go for it, where I punch the goo block and the dang, I tried. You can punch the uh, goo block and the, you can punch the dirt block and the goo ball at the same time. So there are some little perks about this stuff. <clears throat> I'm going to set up my coordinate. This is Beetle 2. Good. Okay. So this is the any percent version. You would be breaking this checkpoint because checkpoints have a ton of money in them. And this is a very easy trick. One, two, three. Wait for Steve. One, two. One, two, three, four. And then one, two. There's a harder version of this if you want to do low percent. So I'm going to do that one next. And in low percent, look. what's up? I was just gonna say, I know some checkpoints have different amounts of money. Is there a rhyme or reason to that? Like, the color of the gem. Right, let's see if I can get this. Ah -ha! Okay, that's one of the hard parts. Come on, Steve. Yes! Okay, so that's how you would do this in low percent. <laughs> there's, a, there's a way to do everything in this game. So to come back to the checkpoint quickly, uh, each checkpoint has a different value of uh, gold. It's uh, art coded. It's art coded in the game. Uh, there's nothing we can do to to change the the okay. value of, mm -hmm. of it. You see how this checkpoint's red? It will drop um, ten red gems, which are worth fifty out of it. So this checkpoint is worth seven hundred and fifty gold because it also has a pink gem in the center of it, and the pink gem is worth two hundred. Okay. Yeah. So mm -hmm. this is, I believe, the uh, low percent one first. Yeah, and in this skip, these enemies only have four HP. So you are hitting it once to pause it, so you have enough time to get over it. Pogoing twice, And then from here, it only has one HP, so if you don't do this trick exactly like this, you can't actually make it over this gap. And you would have to wait on the on the big Bodo anyway. <clears throat> and then again, for, uh, for brevity's sake, here's the uh, any percent one. And uh, this is a good way to tell if you are using V-Sync or not. <laughs> uh, one of the rules for the community is that you have V-Sync enabled. If you don't, you would actually fall down and not be able to do this trick. So you just knuckle through it twice, one, two, three, four, and then you don't even need Steve to finish the room. And the last thing I'm going to be showing is uh, Mole Knight. Mole Knight, uh, you would have a weapon, so now I have the Dust Knuckle. And uh, I'm going to be trying to kill Mole Knight very quickly, um, using a little bit of the Dust Knuckle, but also Mole Knight flies across the screen really quickly. I'm going to try and hit Mole Knight twice on each pass. You can reflect projectiles, so some of the ground sparks that Mole Knight shoots at me, I'm going to be reflecting back at him. Uh, and then I'm going to be using the invincibility from the Knuckles to finish the fight. Nice. Very low dives. Nice. Reflect. One, two. Okay, it was one hit off, but that was still a pretty good fight. So, someone asking about V-Sync. Um, V-Sync changes the physics in this game. If you do not have V-Sync enabled, you actually um, will not be able to interact the same way in the game. If I go to Options, uh, Video, and V-Sync, you have to have it set to Enabled, Not Disabled, Not Legacy. Legacy is even more weird physics, but that may make the game run on your computer. So if you just want to speed run the game, but like you can't submit it to the leaderboard without it being on, um, and it has to be set to enable to submit it to the leaderboard. But if you just want to speed run the game, do whatever works for you. 
and we'll still help you out and stuff. But for the sake of the game being um, fair across all platforms, it has to be set to enabled for it to be accepted to the leaderboard. If you have VSync enabled and you have a 144 hertz monitor, the game runs twice as fast. So auto scroller is actually faster. So we want to try and avoid pay to win. <clears throat> so I'm going to show off the mole knight fight and then I'll almost be done. Where is... Media player, please. Uh, VLC player giving me a little bit of trouble. Well, that's fine. I will uh, just go to the last thing I wanted to show off, which is the Reese fight. Um, this is one of the most hilarious things ever. And I'm going to switch to a file that has the flare wand. We're not just strictly showing off um, any percent stuff. We will be sometimes detouring to show off some other things. So this is a completed file that has like all of the things. And where is using S trainer? I can actually just go straight to the Reese fight, which is normally just a wandering map encounter. Oops. Make sure I have everything set up. Okay. So I love this fight because it's like, this is just hilarious. Get juggled, son. <laughs> Dead. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> nice. <laughs> <laughs> I love I love that fight. Uh, it's just absolutely hilarious. Try it at home. That's one of the not really hard tricks. Is there a, um, a, a convenient timing for those fireballs, like with uh, Black Knight? Yes. So at the start of the fight, the first thing you do is you just fire one, like, as soon as you can. He'll fly into it. And then you just hit him with the... You just fire one on the ground. Make sure that you're, like, he's on his way down so he lands into it. And then you want to stand, like, right around where I am on this waterfall to catch him. And so long as you don't drop the stun lock, it's a pretty easy fight. Oops, because once you do let it go, it is really hard to get him back into it because he'll start throwing his boomerangs. Dude, my boobs. Also, fun fact, that requires exactly 40 magic to do, which is the exact amount you have in 100%, which you need to do this fight for. <laughs> so that's gonna wrap up the first section of the, uh, of the showcase. Um, the next section is going to be the remaining stages in World 2. And uh, it's been about an hour. Good time for a small break. Yeah. So uh, we'll, we'll take a break here. Just for people who are unfamiliar on Hotfix, for, we like to take wellness breaks, just encourage some healthy behavior. Uh, I'm going to get up and stretch and refill water and encourage viewers to do the same. So we're going to take a few minutes and we'll be back after that with uh, more how to train your shovel knight and i think we'll be switching over to magic madman showing showcasing some stuff after that is that the plan yes yeah all right so we'll be back in just a little bit as we uh switch who's going to be showing us stuff so stay tuned and we'll be back in just a few Hello everyone and welcome back to our special on Shovel Knight tutorial stuff. We're calling it How to Train Your Shovel Knight. Having fun with it so far. We started off with Moomoo going over the first part of the Any% percent Shovel Knight route. Throwing in a few extra things to show along the way. And now we've got Magic Madman who's going to be covering the next part of the run for us while explaining a few things. Hope you all have been enjoying it so far, but as a quick reminder, uh, Hotfix is funded in part thanks to your subscriptions and bits, and we would appreciate it if you would consider subscribing to support future broadcasts. If you have an idea for a show like this, because this was something that Moomoo proposed to us, just let us know. Uh, there's a form in the bottom left of gamesdonequick.com slash hotfix you can fill out. Let us know things that you think would make a good fit on Hotfix, and maybe we'll 
put up its own show for it like this, or maybe we'll just integrate it into one of our ongoing shows. So if you have content you'd like to show off on Hotfix, let us know. GameStoneQuick.com slash Hotfix. There's a form you can fill out on the bottom left. But Magic Madman, how you doing? What are we going for next year? Well, uh, we are going for the Explodatorium, the, the stage of Plague Knight. Uh, we are going to buy the, the second item in the run. And this one uh, gives access to nice tricks, I, I think. <laughs> the, the, the hardest one, uh, mostly. Except for the one uh, Mumu sh showed uh, with the Steve views in, uh, in the Lost City. So yeah, this, is, this will be fun, hopefully. And I hope to, to get the, the tricks as well. Yeah, we're so... ready whenever you are. Okay, perfect. So firstly, uh, I will explain what, what will happen because it will start actually right when I launch the, the, the stage. There is a global cycle in this stage, uh, which makes some uh, things uh, uh, having some specific behaviors. Uh, mainly uh, some fire thrower and uh, some pots uh, throwing their their lead uh, in a uh, in specific cycle. So I will have to do all the first uh, rooms uh, quickly enough to catch uh, the, the best cycle possible. And I will use a lot the, the dust knuckle. So be ready. Uh, I, I won't be able to explain the, the room uh, when I go through them because it will be a bit fast and uh, yeah. I don't have really time to explain, sorry. So, here we go. So I'm using the dust knuckle. I'm not using the cheat code Mumu used, so I have the classic color of uh, Shone Light. Sorry. That's fine. True blue. So, uh, Mumu, while Madman is going through yep. and like trying to do these rooms fast, how exactly does the dust knuckle work? Are there any mechanics? to it people should be aware of, like to go fast yeah. with it? So Madman is uh, using invincibility frames from punching through the rats that explode, uh, and also very precise positioning uh, so that uh, he does not take damage from it. Um, the Dust Knuckle moves you a little bit faster than regular walking speed. I believe it saves about 0.2 seconds every time you use the Dust Knuckle. So by going really ham on using the Dust Knuckle, uh, you're able to catch a faster pot cycle in this room. Um, he wasn't able to get the literal fastest pot cycle, but this is still really good. Um, by going through all those extra enemies with the Dust Knuckle, uh, you do manage to save quite a bit of time. And since we don't have uh, a lot in the way of movement options at the beginning, beginning of the game, at first we were doing, you know, holding two directions, now we have the Dust Knuckle, so we're just, anytime we can punch something, we're gonna punch it. Yeah. Okay, so I'm just gonna buy the, the Alchemy Coin, and gonna show you what exactly happened and the, the best cycle you can get so just making sure you can see video uh yeah gonna put it at the beginning so as i said the the cycle starts as soon as you enter the, the stage so I even if you die during the stage and come back to the beginning of the stage you won't have the the cycle because of this little animation at the beginning of the stage <coughs> So the first room is really basic. You just go as far as fast as you can. I'm gonna use the dust knuckle to get, gain some speed, as I said, going through the rat with the invisibility frames. And I can slow down maybe a bit here. Every time he punches through something, he's saving the tiniest bit of time. And this is one of those, yeah. the hardest cycles to get in this stage. So here I need to attack. Oh. Okay, the media is doing some weird thing again. Gonna back up. So you you need to attack the, the pot or you will touch it and get hit. And here, I'm gonna use the dust knuckle one time and immediately jump and use it again to reach the, the big dirt block. And uh, if if I use the, the, the dust knuckle again, I will gain less, uh, less uh, distance with the dust knuckle. Well, you can see it even if the me the player is a bit weird. When, whenever you punch something, um, the dust knuckle kind of corrects your position. So if you're punching something that's slightly further away, like when he's skipping over one of the smaller dirt blocks, it kind of warps him forward a little bit, so it does save an additional tiny bit of time. 
So yeah, I'm gonna slow down on this rat. Uh, you have to hit him uh, as high as possible because uh, his explosion do, uh, stays for a long time, a really long time, and it's long enough to actually hit you if you hit him in the middle of its uh, hitbox. So here I'm barely dodging the explosion at the end. Sorry for the media, it, it didn't do that earlier. Oh, whoa, whoa, whoa. where am I? Yeah, I think it okay, skips it's... forward, yeah. The bitrate is too much for VLC player. <laughs> yeah, so I'm just gonna full speed. It's, it, there is nothing to, to show off uh, for now. But you see he just barely makes it onto that rising platform, which yeah. is like about a second and a half-ish faster than waiting on the next one. And that one specifically means that in, this, in the next room that he's entering and... right now, Everything starts now, actually. Uh, this is the part where you you, you will decide if uh, if you go for it or not. So if you want to stay safe, you just have to wait or, uh, and, and stay safe. Or you can jump. And you will see me doing a damage boost. I think it's right now. I'm turning left. To get a damage boost on the right, otherwise I would fall in the pit and die. <laughs> so not only is this stupid precise to do, but you're taking a ton of damage just to save that additional tiny bit of time. Yeah. Then we just pogo the the enemy, and this is just to give you uh, a tiny half cycle uh, of, uh, advantage. And since you have need to damage boost on those spikes to work here, uh, you are actually just saving less than a second. But you are saving time. But thankfully, if you do make it through all this, there is a very easy to get health refill. So this is entirely viable for a strat to do, to yeah. throw on zero runs. And for the, um, the timing of those cycles, is that global cycle on the stage, or does it start when you first see the flasks bubbling in the background? It's with the spiked pot lids that you see on the purple cauldrons that's the global cycle and there's mm -hmm. one yeah. other element in the stage there are you see the uh the golden fire traps on the screen yep. um there are some silver ones later on that are automatic those are also on a global cycle so if you want to do the stage as optimally as possible um you would have to practice the entire stage repeatedly yeah so you have to yeah. get the first several screens that don't even have the flasks in the background right if you want to do it yeah okay now I'm gonna explain why we are taking the alchemy coin. Uh, it's a weapon we are not really taking for damages, except for some bosses uh, in the boss rush and for Plague Knight. So as you can see, it bounces on enemies, enemies that has more than one hit, uh, one health. So it's not really powerful and useful. I'm just gonna respawn because I need my magic. Uh, I'd like to kill him actually, so I can show you what it does. Okay, so you can juggle it with your shovel, but more importantly, you can use a dust knuckle to gain some speed, and you can pogo it. So it, it gives you the the possibility to gain to gain uh, speed and uh, and height in the in some jumps. So here is your health refill. Very important to, to have some after what we, you normally do. And uh, uh, the next room, yeah, go ahead. I just wanted to bring up the uh, the alchemy coin. Did not used to be the most optimal weapon to use. Um, it, it actually started as a joke um, a long time ago when when Smoggy was Smoggy still runs this game like real at a really high level. Uh, but at one point. He was like, okay, so I'm the king of any percent, what now? And everyone was like, well, why don't you just do an any percent run that gets a different weapon? And everyone was like, well, the alchemy coin is basically useless, so why don't you do a run with that? And it turned out to be, um, it, to have so many little applications that when the task came around, the task was like, oh, hey, uh, you can knuckle this thing and go really fast, and like you can do like all kinds of absolutely ridiculous tricks with it uh, because of how much height you gain and the fact that you can knuckle it for a little bit more speed. It makes so many things possible. Uh, but it unironically wound up becoming the best thing ever. <laughs> yeah. So the next room uh, has, a, uh, has a good use of the dust knuckle. It allows me to, to go through some breakable platforms and uh, have a good cycle. 
And I will try to use the, the coin and the dust knuckle as well to, to get a music sheet. So this will be a strat uh, used in uh, Undo. Essentially, essentially, it has no use uh, in any person except uh, wasting your, your magic. Oh yeah, I didn't set it. But the coin use uh, 8 magic. It's a lot when you have only 30 max magic. So yeah, you, you should be careful on your on your magic use. Okay. So this one's I'm gonna use. Ah, oh, that was too early. So I didn't got the music sheet, but we are prepared. <clears throat> so, okay. I have no no sound on my footage. I'm sorry. So. I'm using a, a save file here with uh, all my life and magic, but it's not really evident. And uh, oh, come on. So the point of yeah. the, the strat that he's showing off right now is that this is, uh, again, we're not showing off only any percent stuff. Uh, this is a good example of uh, just how useful the coin is. This is something that would happen in 100%. So here we are using uh, the, the dust knuckle four times to go through um, the platforms. I'm seeing the yeah. game oh, still, not the video. Oh, yeah. Excuse me. No problem. There we go. I'm gonna go back a little bit. All right. So here we are using the dust knuckle on those platforms. We are gonna use it uh, four times because the fourth time you are using uh, the dust knuckle in a row. You will get a tiny summer. You will do a tiny somersault, which gives you a, a little bit of height. It's barely enough to to reach this platform, actually, this one. So here, you can see me doing a somersault, and I reach this platform just barely. So I'm gonna do two dust knuckles, and here I'm gonna do four in a row again to barely hit these flamethrowers. Uh, this one activates only when you walk on it. And here I'm gonna toss the coin, knuckle it, and doing a good jump. You need to, to hit the, the coin not too early and not too late to barely get the, the music shit. It's really tight. I think that Smoggy goes for it, but uh, it tends to, to do a backup. Uh, oh, because normally, actually, you have to, to to pogo a bird coming towards you and go upward to to break this dirt block and fall down to the music sheet. All right, so coming next is a mid boss. Uh, this is the first one in the in the game. Uh, I I'm not seeing my my game. Wait. So normally I would have magic, so I'm just gonna give me back my magic. So this will be the, the Alchemister. Uh, he will stay in his corner throwing some potion at me. And I will uh, use the Dust Knuckle to go through him. And I will just uh, shovel cancel to to give him some hits. I missed the pot, the potion, but it's not too... It's, it's not a big mistake. Okay. So as long as he's... He's not leaving this corner, you're all good. Uh, this wasn't a perfect fight, but I will, I will show you a better one. <clears throat> that that mini boss has uh, 24 HP, which is uh, four more than even bosses, and it goes down considerably faster than a lot of them. Yeah. So at the start of the fight, you want to throw back this potion. Well, actually, it's not this one, because it, he can throw at you some uh, potions that are multicolors. You will see one a bit later. And the, the multicolor ones will uh, go directly on him if you attack them. And it does, I think, two damages per potion. So it's good to have some extra damage. This one. And this is just uh, shovel counseling. I'm using uh, my... Uh, my button, uh, which is bind to jump and attack at the same time, because it's easier for me to to time the, the jump and the attack properly this way. Actually, I'm mashing. I'm not uh, timing it. 
when you start to transform, he's invincible, so you have no you you have nothing to do except uh, you can attack this portion, and uh, when it falls back, it will hit the boss for some extra damages. And yeah, he can die uh, without even moving. Is there a way okay. to kill him before uh, he transforms? You have to get lucky. You'd need yeah. a, a red potion and you would need to reflect uh, two of those green potions, which would be extremely yeah. stupid. Mm. Yeah, it's doable, but uh, I, I have no footage of this because uh, I would have to grind for way too long. Yeah, fair enough. So this room is on a global cycle as well. As you can see, those flame thrower are throwing flames. <laughs> still on the uh, video. Oh, damn it! I'm sorry. No problem. So those one. And uh, then, if you are doing the, the stage perfectly, you want to 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 come here just at the right time, so you can have a fast cycle in this room, which is this one. Not this one. You don't want to get hit by this flamethrower. You want to be able to jump directly here without taking the ladder. So it's it's a bit tricky. You have to be like landing as the flames are withdrawing on the first like on the first flames to be able to make that cycle. Okay, so coming next, you can see this uh, flamethrower on the on the right bottom. Uh, there will be two others on the right, and uh, you, you will have to jump on, bo on on those. And normally you will grab the ladder on the right of the screen and just uh, go up to the next room. But actually in the next room there is a ladder a little bit on the left of the right one. And you can grab it from this room. So I, I will try to, to do this. We are using uh, an enemy to to, the, to do this trick, and there is a backup which is really easy to, to do, so just in case. Ah. It should be... no, it's not enough. How to train your chompy. <laughs> uh, <laughs> dead serious, that thing... so being able to dance with this ah. thing properly is actually something that you will be learning how to do when you're running this game. Because you just barely... Gonna... Grab, you barely grab a ladder that's off screen. And that triggers the uh, screen transit. Yeah, I'm gonna do the backup. I have another try. Okay. There you go. There we go. That's the movement that you need to bait it so that you can pogo off of it and then grab the ladder. Which I can show the, the backup actually. The backup is really easy to do. So, you grab this ladder, you go up, you take a hit, and uh, with, the, with the invisibility frames you can easily pogo the, the enemy. Okay. So I'm gonna show you the, the next room, what, because there is a trick with, with, this, uh, with this little guy. He will hit me, it's, it doesn't matter. So the normal way to do this room, I'm gonna kill him. Come on. The normal way is just to, to, to walk here, go to the next stage. Do not die, it's not uh, <laughs> mandatory. <laughs> and normally you, you have to, to walk all the way around. But you can use this knight to pogo him at the end of this room. And you will be able to use the dirt knuckle on the on the dirt block at the at the top of the platform in the next room. So I'm gonna I'm gonna do it. There is a setup for this. You do a low jump, low jump, high jump, high jump, pogo. And there you go. Nice. And there is a, also a backup with the knight who is there. So if you if you don't get this dirt block, you can use the knight up there. If, if you stand here and, and you jump, he will jump as soon as you jump. So if you wait for him to be in specific position, you can bait him to fall down. You can pogo him and, and uh, reach the, the dirt block. I won't show it because I'm not good at it. 
So and I, mean, I, I don't want to die more. So that's yeah. using the thing you talked about earlier, how like when you hit the dirt block, it sort of snaps you in a position to give you more height with that? Yeah, that's exactly yeah. what happened. At the top, you're barely kind of like within range to hit the dirt block, and okay. then the dust knuckle fixes your position. Like, like when... What, it, it's like when I use a dust knuckle on, at the top of those dirt blocks, it will re reposition me on the, on the ground. But uh, for this trick, it's actually the opposite. You are dust knuckle the bottom of the dirt block and it, it pushes you upward on yeah. the ground. Makes sense. So there's nothing specific in the next room. Finally, one room where I just walk. You can grab some gold. You do need to have a specific amount of money by the time you beat this stage. Uh, if you're actually, doing there's, there's a damage boost, but I won't get it, right? So if you if you have a bad timing, you can get a, a damage boost to to go up without the the pot the lead of the pot. And coming next is a plague knight fight. Uh, this fight is really hard, Ca casually and uh, for speedrunners as well. Uh, he has a lot of RNG. The RNG is in uh, his behaviors with his jump. So. The number of time he jumps and the the length of his jumps is uh, different with the RNG. But the beginning of the fight is always the same. I will throw my coin and uh, do some shovel cancelling and uh, throw back his potion at him. And then I, I will try to, to adapt to what he does. It's important to note that the coin actually, for some reason, does a full heart of damage to Plague Knight and no other boss. Good reflex. Ah. That's not good. Finishing up at this point shouldn't be too hard though. Okay. I'm wasting all, all my coins, but that was <laughs> a good fight. That was still a good fight. So if you are missing the a good kill and a Plague Knight is going away from you, what I do generally is staying in place. Because if if you're chasing him, when you are near him, he will go at the opposite side of the room again and again, and it's really painful. So, yeah. I'm gonna try to show you... Well, I'm gonna show you some uh, some quick kills. Applesauce uh, specifically labbed out all the different pattern variations for Plague Knight. So it turns out yeah. that if you are really, really good at this this quick kill, there are about seven variations. Uh, and there are way more than that the longer you take on the fight. Um, but seven is already a lot compared to every other yeah. boss which has basically just one quick kill you have to memorize. I am I am consistent on one pattern only, so and this is the first one you you will see. Gonna... All right, that's not what I wanted. The player is really weird. <clears throat> I'm sorry. Okay. Can I stay are. at... Uh... Alright, so so the beginning, as, as I said, is uh, always the same. You throw the coin as soon as possible, you jump to, to be able to move uh, at the same time. You're doing some shovel counseling. Here I'm gonna throw a coin for extra damages. Uh, I stay to to be blocked between uh, those two potions, so I can hit him uh, constantly without uh, having the recoil uh, pushing me away from him. And yeah, he goes. So this is uh, the pattern I'm the most used to. The other one are for me a bit uh, a bit yolo for uh, for some parts. Ba basically, something that um, happens with all bosses is that. Uh... Whenever they have uh, four HP left, four full hearts, um, they do some type of desperation attack. For Plague Knight, it's summoning a whole ton of vats in the room. And because they act as physical objects, uh, you can use that to prevent yourself from getting pushed away from Plague Knight. Yeah. So most quick kills will be within like a one or two second variance of each other. Uh, so you do hope for good RNG. Um, if you get bright, bright RNG and he flies across the room from you, you can still finish up the fight, but it, it's going to be much trickier. Yeah. 
So so before going gold... to the... Yeah, excuse me. Go ahead. But, uh, I was just going to ask, how much gold do you want to have um, from doing that stage? You want to have 8,000 at the end of this stage. Because... Oh, this guy shouldn't be either. Because you want to go to the armor po outpost to buy a few things. The first one is a new armor, the Conjurer's Coat. So, uh, as it says, uh, it will increase my magic by 50. And at the same time, all enemies will drop uh, magic when they die. But it has uh, the default that I will take some extra damages uh, uh, each time I'm gonna get hit, so it's a bit risky. Uh, when you are beginning to learn this this uh, this speedrun, generally uh, you don't take the armor, or you can get extra health for safety because uh, it can get really really hard, and you will see me dying uh, maybe in the next uh, against the next boss. And you want to buy the charge slash as well. So this is uh, an upgrade for your shovel. When you press your attack, you will start to charge a new attack uh, beforehand, uh, right after it. And if you release your button, you land a charge slash. Uh, it does more damages than, than a normal slash. It does two two damages. And the hitbox also is a little bit increased uh, behind you. It actually hits behind you, and uh, I'm not sure it's increased uh, towards you. It's a little bit further in front of you. There's actually a trick in the planes you can do on New Game Plus where you hit a dirt block through a wall because of it. Oh, and uh, with if you cancel the animation of the of the sl first slash with a jump, you you tend to charge a little bit faster your charge slash. As you yeah, can see. Charge. The charging only begins once you've fully drawn back your shovel blade, and then uh, if you jump and cancel the swing animation, um, the charge starts much faster. Oh yeah, so I can show you the, the basic, uh, what we are doing with every coin, near to every coin, so you throw it, you knock on it, come on, I'm gonna fail it now. <laughs> <laughs> it's not easy, this is actually really, really hard stuff. Oh, very nice. As you can see, I, I can't reach uh, this uh, this platform up there, but with the coin you can reach it. This is why Madman took over for World 2, because there's so much more uh, coin and knuckle stuff in World 2. Yeah. So now I think that Baz will spawn. Stay away. So he's spawning because on this save file I, I already killed uh, Rise. But uh, otherwise, he, he wouldn't be in your way. Uh, if you're going fast, if you're going fast enough, uh, the the optional encounters won't annoy you on a speedrun. This is a thing that uh, Yacht, Cl Yacht Club game uh, made uh, after the release. I don't know when they did it, but uh, they they did it spe especially for the speedrunners. So. Yeah, yeah. There's a patch note on their website that says uh, wandering encounters will not spawn based on how much time has passed. So if you beat uh, World 1 within 10 minutes, um, you won't get the first Duck Knight. Uh, if you beat World 2 in under 25 minutes, uh, Reese will not enter World 2. Previously, Reese used to troll us a lot. Uh, yeah. <laughs> back on that the first any percent oh, tournament, cool. you can see... Um, you can see Tolu and I getting trapped by Reese for like three minutes <laughs> during a race. Yep. Yeah. Shoutouts to SMB3. Oh. <laughs> no hands, Ma. Alright, so we are going to Iron Way. Uh, this stage has a water mechanic. And it's it's not a bad one for once. So I will show you here. Just let me get rid of those guys. So when you're underwater and you jump, you have extra height in your jumps. And when you fall down, you you are you are falling down uh, slow slowly. Slowly? Slow slower. Slower? Oh, excuse me. So yeah. So this allows you to get some to to, to easily hit your 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 coin when you throw it, for example. Okay, so this room, oh, 
normally you, you get those blocks earlier. So this room has nothing to show, but the next one I will try to go for something you you, you don't want to do in your runs. Please don't do this in your runs. <laughs> <laughs> so let me check, okay. So as you can see, there is some bubbles here, and you have to wait for them to despawn when you when you are landing on it to, to go in the next room. But fortunately, there is a little gap between the spikes and the bubbles, and it's just enough for you to, to go between those, so you can try it. I'm gonna give it... The task gets this first try. Well... <laughs> <laughs> Oops. This might actually be like pixel perfect, I think, maybe. It is. It is, because if you're one pixel to the left, you die. If you're one pixel to the right, you land on the bubbles. Yeah. So I, I will just go ahead, and uh, right at the beginning of the next room, there is uh, a coin trick, which is pretty cool. This one is actually worth doing. Uh, I missed it a, a little bit, but that was okay. The whole point of this one is that because falling is so slow, by using the knuckle and the coin, you don't have to fall all the way down and then jump back up. Okay. Very nice. Because otherwise, as Mumu said, you you would you would have to to just fall down and jump back up. Well, yeah, you can just knuckle the checkpoint for a bit of speed. Uh, there is nothing in the next room. Nothing special, I mean, with the coin at least. Uh, the next room has, has some tentacles, I will really show them actually. So those tentacles spawn when you are near them, and you can only break them. Uh, we'll make it respawn. You, you can only break them when you hit the head of the tentacle, or the tip of the tentacle, rather. <laughs> I called it there. And... It's kind of not. <laughs> yeah, you're right. And at the end of this room, actually, there is a tentacle that blocks your way to the next room. So I'm gonna try to juggle a, a coin to to kill it uh, without having to to jump. So we will see. This way. So I'm saving like uh, less than a second. But you are getting some money back for it, which is also nice. Uh, the next room, there is a tr uh, there is a setup for a hard trick done in the in the task. So I will probably fail it, but uh, I will be able to show you the backup. And next, I will show you th what the task does. So basically, I want to align myself on a specific spot, and uh, af right after the screen transition, I, I will try to to throw a coin at the first frame possible. So let's see what. What I do. Ah, and that's a total failure actually. But don't yeah. worry, we we have a, we have a tool that, that allows me to to modify my spawn. I want to be a bit higher, set specified values. So what Madman's doing right now is actually really nice. Um, you can use S Trainer and then just kind of guess your coordinate. That way you can, uh, if you, oh nice, you got it! So that, oh, that was it, but but I didn't pogo the, the tentacle, so... Gonna so use the, the backup. Getting rid of those bottom three is the hard part, and it, it just means that you can fall down much more quickly. Okay. How precise is this trick? It's really precise! <laughs> it's uh, it's really too much stupid. precise. <laughs> it's really too much precise. More than likely, I'm gonna do you what uh, Madman did at the end there, where the coin bounces back and forth. Okay, so I'm gonna show you what you what you want to to see. So I'm gonna stop right here. No, right here. So my vis visual cue is my horn, the tip of my horn, uh, aligned with this line of rocks in the background. And uh, as you will see, after the screen transition, 
I'm gonna try to get. Uh, come on. Will it work? Uh, I. Yeah, it will work. Right here. So nothing else has happened. I I've already sent my my call. None of the technical. Nothing's even spawned. This is the literal yeah. first. And damn it, you're missing everything. <laughs> you can see them all getting completely wiped out by it. Yeah. Okay. The coin destroyed all the tentacles except for the first one. The first one you have to pogo it, and you are free to go afterwards. And for the next room, there is another trick. So you can dust knuckle through this enemy. And here, I'm going to throw a coin while I'm falling down. So I, I don't have the, the animation and, and uh, I can keep moving while the coin is thrown. So at the end, at the end of the, the platform, I can dust knuckle the coin and I can reach this pl platform. Otherwise, you will have to wait to fall down uh, below. So it's it's a little, little uh, gain of time. This player is really funky. I do want to do a, uh, a little shout out to Norcas, who I see in chat, who's also answering some questions. Norcas is also one of the other yeah. Shovel Knight runners who goes for some very difficult tricks in this game. So thank you, Norcas. I see you there. Yeah. Uh, maybe I want to, to put a respawn here. I don't know. Maybe I will have to explain a few things about this mid boss. So this fish is invincible because his weak point is in the chest of his uh, antenna. So for now you just have to to deal with this auto scroller. He's throwing the, the fishes at uh, the more or less at the same time yeah, every time. But the RNG is in uh, in the height, in its position at the end of the auto scroller. This is not a good one. Ooh, not too bad though. Yeah, that was pretty good. Uh, sometimes he, he will let you dust knuckle him to, to his death uh, without uh, having to fall down. In, in the next room, I'm gonna take uh, a damage on purpose. To, to set my to be able to work on the spikes then I can jump and pogo the, the manta. That's a pretty cool trick. Gonna set the spawn here. So here you should normally use uh, the missiles to, to go through the room. But uh, you can actually use this third block. When you attack it, it will fall down and you pogo it. You can pogo it. It, it only exists one time in, the, in a stage. If you break it like so and I, I die, it won't be here anymore. I, I need to use my, my tool to, to make it uh, respawn. So you can attack it and pogo it. But uh, recently, actually, uh, I can't remember who discovered that, but you can just pogo it. You can, you can just pogo it and go to the next room. Oh wow. Yeah, it's a pretty easy setup like that. Yeah, it's easier than attacking. Uh, these, these missiles are on uh, global cycles. Uh, sometimes you are able to go without taking... A, well, I can show you actually. If you're lucky or fast enough, you can go th like this through the first missile without taking care of it. But uh, most of the time he, he will hit you and makes you fall down. So it's, it's up to you. What you do you want to try to lose time or well, do you want to, to gain uh, half a second or do, do you want to lose ten seconds? In this room there are tricks called anchor skips. Uh, this is a stupid and, uh, trick. <laughs> I'm gonna show you my visual cue for the first one. I'm using I'm using the tip of my left arm aligned with the pipes behind me. So like so, it should be good. And in, in this position, yeah, I think it's good enough. I, I just have to do two high jumps on the right. And I sh the first one should make 
uh, put me on the, the anchor. When, when, when I will be near the anchor, actually, she will fall down, if you don't know, so... Yeah, you're intended to mm. jump on it when it's when it's coming back up. Yeah. But this one... Uh, oh no, I didn't put my... Uh, well, this is why you should put your coordinates properly. I actually have them on a, on a text file. Let me grab those. A uh, reminder, if you're just coming in, um, we are using S-Trainer, which is a PC tool we use to practice Shovel Knight with. Um, it is uh, free to download in the server, and uh, it just makes it so that you can warp around the stage whenever you like, however much you like, to practice anything. Yeah, it only works on uh, Steam version, though. But still, it's good. I'm gonna set my respawn this time. Okay. And coming coming next is a pit with three anchors, three or four, three. No, four actually. And I'm gonna go through one using a coin, so let's see how it goes. Like so. Nice. That's that invincibility from the knuckle that's protecting him from the anchor. Yeah, and I actually have a footage. <clears throat> no this first anchor skip without like lining yourself up perfectly is really hard so using that visual cue does make it a lot more consistent yeah. and here i'm gonna throw the coin as soon as i enter the water this is my the visual cue used generally so here you can see it's thrown and you just just knuckle it and uh, you are free to go sometimes the fireballs of the magician will uh, annoy you but you can deal with it uh, pretty easily. Okay. And next up is uh, the boss. I just need to to get my way to the boss fight. So this is a kind of an auto scroller. There's nothing to do. And you can gain some some time using a coin. I'm gonna redo it because now... No, provided I want to use it. Enough, provided that you have enough magic, you can um, drop the coin and then just punch it to get across. It's just a tiny bit more time saved. Uh, yeah. And coin's not going to do a lot on Treasure Knight, but it will be slightly useful here. So this is uh, Treasure Knight. Uh, he has some RNG as well. But uh, his RNG is... Uh, is way better than the, the, the plague one. He has only two patterns if you are doing well the fight. Uh, and the two patterns are just his first attack, he will throw his anchor on the left side of the room. And uh, he will then next not go to, the, to his anchor or, or pull back his anchor. So depending on that, you have to react and, uh, and well, kill him as fast as possible. Um, the next part of the fight is uh, just uh, shovel cancelling and abusing the fact the fact that his his hitbox won't uh, touch you if he's uh, he's getting hit by you. So let's see how it goes. Good stuff. Ooh, That's nice, perfect. got it. Yo, do it live. <laughs> Very, very nice. That you need is, to, to pose here. That is an extremely difficult quick kill. Um, and it's also incredibly dangerous because normally at this point you would have uh, about a heart and a half at this point um, because of the damage boosting that you do in the Iron Whale. And because the Conjurer's Coat makes you take uh, an extra hit of damage, essentially, you're probably going to die if you take any extra hits whatsoever. Don't pay attention to this show light. I don't know why, why he's there. <laughs> <laughs> so when when the fight starts, you you want to throw a coin as soon as possible, and then you will dust knuckle uh, the first anchor of uh, Treasure Knight. Hello, oh, so the fight was going on. Okay, that's really well. It should okay. So I throw the coin. And on my way down, I'm just knuckling the, the, the anchor. 
Then, as soon as you are in range for, for a normal attack, here, you're doing a normal attack, then you cancel it with a jump, you go into a charge slash, and you land a charge slash. So you, you will do that no matter what the, the pattern is doing. So here, it will go on the left of the screen, like what, what it does uh, with me earlier. Come on. Can Way I... back at the beginning of the, of the showcase, when I was talking about um, holding left and right at the same time, that's where this comes into play. Yeah, I'm, I'm doing right here to, to stay uh, on the left of uh, Treasure Knight while uh, shovel counseling. So he's holding both directions to be able to stay on top of uh, on top of Treasure Knight. Um, because your attacks always end up going to the right, but because you're holding left, you're moving left. Uh, so it's it's really weird, but that's it makes that so much easier to do um, if you're if you're trying to do that quick kill. You can do it without holding both directions, but man, it is not fun. Yeah. So this is the second pattern. And you can see that the you could have seen that the anchor will hit me, and you take this hit on, on purpose. There is no nothing you can do to, to dodge it, actually. So we take the hit, and since we are we have the Conjurer's Coat, we are, we are taking a lot of damages. So more than a, a quarter of my health on one hit. And then you will go towards me. Yeah. Come on. From, I'm from not going to go frame by frame. From, you go from, toward me. Yeah, you go ahead. Sorry. Uh, from this point on, it's kind of the same, where you're just juggling him with with shovel swings, um, but you just you're forced to take that extra damage. Uh, so the two patterns are: you either you get here or you don't, uh, and then you just try and stay on top of him. Yeah. Uh, and you you know that you are successful if at this point uh, he has only eight uh, health left. And it he goes on the on the left side of the room. If if you are too slow uh, damaging him, he will tend to do a third attack, and this attack can actually take a long time because he can go on the ceiling. And you, if you kill him, kill him when he's on the ceiling, he will take forever to to fall down because of the water uh, physics. And normally, if he goes on the ceiling, you, you want to to wait him to, to come back down to kill him. It's, it's faster. Okay. Next step is a dream section. And then uh, Mumu will take uh, the lead again. So every, third st every three stage, you, you have a dream. Uh, and the second and the third one have a, a, a cool skip, actually. Uh, you can only do this because you have the Conjurer's Coat and you are taking extra damages from enemies. And uh, I will aim to, to die, and while I'm I having the, the animation of taking the last hit, I will grab Shield Knight, and uh, you will see what, what happens. <laughs> this is going to be one of the few downsides to getting extra or safety health or backup health, or if you don't get the coat, because you need to yeah. have the least amount to finish this dream as quickly as possible. Uh, Shoutouts to Speedfrog who found this, by the way. This is absolutely hilarious. Remember to jump if you get it, by the way. And uh, hold, jump and hold right. And that. Oh, sorry. Oh. You, so, you will have to do it. <laughs> did you just? Uh, you just kind of. Just... Uh, go ahead, man, go. just speed. Just he slept ran out of there. <laughs> so I'm gonna show it a bit slower. Okay. So I'm taking a first hit from the knight on the left. So then I go on the right to take the potions in the face. I'm gonna pogo uh, this thief two times, and I will cancel my pogo with a with an attack, and I grab shield knight. And as you can see. I go frame by frames. Compared to where you would normally be when you finish this? Yeah. Uh, you're going to see where he ends up. I think uh, the player... Keep going, yeah. keep going. 
No, never. Okay, so so grab shield knight. Up. There are so many frames. We're okay, trying to catch going. Frame where you can see where sh uh, shovel knight ends up. Okay. Hello. <laughs> There, sh there shouldn't be that much frames. I'm gonna slow down the speed and make it play normally. So okay, pay attention, that's... To the, uh, pay attention to the bottom left. Okay. Damn it! <laughs> <laughs> I don't know what is happening. It worked per perfectly uh, this morning. That's fine. That's oh, fine. Yeah. Okay. Oh, there it is. So, so you saw me there, and normally you should be asleep on this log here. And here, if, even if you don't see it, you can trust me. I, I'm pressing absolutely no inputs, and you can see that I'm moving on the left side while still asleep. <laughs> Yes. Yeah. <laughs> so the best part about that is that um, when Speedfrog found this, because we all knew that like the dream sequence ends when you catch Shield Knight, um, Speedfrog found a way to die and catch Shield Knight in the air, and then yeah. uh, Speedfrog used to do 100% runs for this game. Um, you get a meal ticket during those uh, th those dream sequences. Uh, so Speedfrog tried to jump and uh, go pick up the, the meal ticket, but because you're you're sliding like that, it actually prevents you from getting the meal ticket. Like it's like the, there's an invisible force pulling you away from it. <laughs> and, and this is how you, 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 you lose you. Okay. We we suspect the Mumu said me like he, since he's uh, developing a game. That probably uh, since you are since you are dying and grabbing uh, shield, uh, shield knight, you you keep this momentum even if you died, and uh, even if you if you go in the state of sleeping, so you 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 keep sliding, and this is why uh, you can go on the right as well because you have this momentum pushing you towards the left side uh, of the room. So, but this is just a uh, a guess because. We are not yeah. the, dev the devs of the game. Yeah, my best guess is that you're just keeping the knockback momentum. Um, and you can, uh, to answer Norcast, you can get knocked back to the right as well. It doesn't matter which way you do it. It's just a little bit faster to the left. You end up further away um, when you do the knockback to the left. If you do it to the right, it just takes a little bit longer. Uh, and you can actually cancel the momentum from, from that trick, that glitch, if you use something that holds you in place. So if you use like the Warhorn, or the mobile, uh, not the mobile. Uh, if you use the Warhorn or the Phase Locket, you'll be able to move again. Um, but it was really funny uh, seeing uh, Speedfrog getting pulled away. He's like, I need that meal ticket. <laughs> yeah. So, yeah, I, I leave the lead to, to Mumu for the next part of the run. And uh, I might come back for some tricks. We will see how, how it happens. But I, I trust you, you can do it. I will do my best. <laughs> so the, the next part is a uh, flying machine. And this is where we are going to buy a new item. And this is, is the best item for mobility uh, in this run. Let me know when I'm good to go. Oh, I can switch to you. Yeah, one second. Yep, go for it. Okay. Um, so, <clears throat> uh, one thing I'm going to show off right now is, like I mentioned earlier, if you're doing um, practice runs, uh, you can enter in codes to help smooth that process off and, and kind of get you along. So, I'm entering, uh, it's uh, DJL. H C X E D, and this is uh, basically how you would set up a new game plus file. 
so I could just go straight into New Game Plus. Uh, but this is going to unlock um, the rest of the game for me. It has all my items and everything. Uh, and the reason why I'm doing this is just so I can go straight over to World 3. And I'm going to be doing Flying Machine. But first I'm going to grab the, uh, the Conqueror's Coat. And there's actually also another good point to bring up. Um, I'm using another program called uh, Joy to Keep, which you might have heard of. Um, and what it does is it allows you to um, find buttons to your controller, uh, keyboard buttons to your controller. So I actually use that so that I can bind things like the coin, the dagger, um, and the dust knuckles for quick and easy use. So I'm going to grab the Conjurer's Coat, and we're going to go straight to uh, Flying Machine, which is the beginning of World 3. I'm going to have uh, a lot more health and, and tools than you would normally have at this point. Um, but all the stuff that I'm going to do and go for is the stuff that you would be doing at any percent at this point. So if everything is good to go, uh, bless you! Get right into it. Starting with um, using the coin in, in this area. This is actually... Oof! There are so many tiny coin tricks that I'm going to be going for now to try and save a little bit of time. Let me actually make sure that I have flying machine. Okay. Good. So that's one room that you can save time in. And then there's this room. Ah, try that one again. Yeah. Saving every single frame. Oops. If you're wondering why I'm doing this, yes, it's because uh, you can see those platforms fall. You would normally have to wait on that blue pl blue platform right there to be able to get up here. So that's one one small time save with the coin. You're wondering, man, why are all these tricks um, in this run? Going out of your way to get the coin takes a little bit of time, but it makes up for all that time. Uh, to go and get it with these tricks, plus some other ones later on. So, I'm gonna do another right here, where normally you would go through this room uh, like this, where you would pogo off that beetle like that. You could do this. Got it! Okay. <laughs> that is, uh... These tricks are kind of fun to do, but they're also very, very difficult. Nice. Stop. Good job. Oops. So I'm gonna keep going with the level. Ah! Very nice. I guess I get to do this one again. Okay. I'm gonna go around the, uh, room the old-fashioned way. Take your time, I mean, it's, it's fine. Although I have the propeller dagger in my inventory, I'm not actually going to use it right now because I wouldn't normally have it at this point. So I'm going to try and do the run as faithfully as possible until I would get it, which will be very, very soon. So Mumu learned all these trick, uh, tricks uh, specifically for the for this showcase. So... Yeah, I, I don't normally yeah. go for a lot of these because they're very, very difficult. And I prefer consistency in my runs. I enjoyed the genuine Moo Moo scream there. <laughs> Please hit me, rat! Dang it. Okay. So you want to take a damage boost off that rat so you can go straight through these cannonballs without having to wait on them. So I'm going to set my coordinates here. Here's another mini boss. This is the dinghy dropper. This is the kill that Magic Madman goes for. And the specific reason why you're killing this boss like this is because in the room afterwards, there's a ladder you want to grab. So I'm going to try and uh, get up to there if possible. One. Oh, okay. You want to make sure you get all these hits because it's just barely enough to kill this thing. Yes! And... Nice, I made it. Okay. So, now I'm going to go for this trick to get in here. Uh, normally, when you're trying to go in... This is where the, the propeller dagger is. So normally to get in here, you would have to drop all the way down to here. Um, by going up on the screen. Because if you try and drop, you just... You can't can't fight the wind. Uh, but if you use the coin,
Nice! I got it. So at this point, you would be spending 4,000 gold to get the propeller dagger right here. And then after waiting for all the animations and stuff, I would have the dagger, and I would be free to leave this room. Oops. <laughs> nice. And uh, for the propeller dagger, I'll explain it better in just a moment. Um, this is now going to be our primary form of movement throughout this game. Uh, it does catch a little bit of updraft sometimes, so uh, the way this thing works is it costs four magic to use. Um, so over the dust knuckle, it's uh, a little bit more expensive. However, um, you do move much faster. Every use of the propeller dagger basically saves you almost a second. So at this point of the run, you're hoping for lots of magic drops. You're trying to kill lots of enemies because they always give you at least five magic. If they drop a giant pot, they'll give you 30 magic. And so this run becomes how many daggers can I fit? How many ammo drops can I get? Uh, how many enemies can I kill? And then this dagger in general does open up um, some other uh, some other routes throughout some of the screens. So for example, in this next room there are which I'm going to show them off. These are like the worst enemy in this game. This is a, yeah. <laughs> this is called a hover me, and uh, that one almost sat on my face. These things are awful. Uh, that one did. So these things uh, deal a heart and a half of damage because of the coat. I can't actually fight them. Like I can't go past them unless if I'm um, jumping straight over them. And uh, they are very likely to knock me into pits. Um, so the setup to get through this room is you go over here, dagger, dagger, jump. Oh. Jump underneath. Ah. Dagger, dagger, jump. Oof. And the point of this is that it baits the Jawas so that. Oh, we call them Jawas. It baits them so that they don't get in your way when you're doing this. And this is very difficult. There we go. Mm. Pray to God! If you mess it up, you end up, you end up being very terrified. I want to try and get this at least once. The zombie behavior is really hard to manipulate, so... Uh, the task doesn't even get their behavior manipulated. Mm, I'm just gonna move on at this point. Yeah. <laughs> Tried a couple times, but yeah, the, um, that specific movement should get you through that room. <sighs> but even then, even if even if you've practiced the trick a million times, because of how vile these things are um, and how hard they are to like control and manipulate, uh, they can mess up that trick. So here's the most important thing in this entire game: is the ability to dance right here. <laughs> I feel like that's one other thing that's very important. We got a glimpse of it already. Similar vein. <laughs> and uh, I am very grateful that at this point um, there are way less coin tricks. Could you? Nice wrap. Um, because uh, even if you do use the coin route, um, this this part of the run becomes quote unquote easier. All right, so I'm going to set up my coordinates here. Um, this is the wind tunnel room. And normally, when you're going through this room, you'd have to go up and down quite a few times um, just to be able to get across. Like you can see, um, I, I have no ability to control the character vertically at this point. I'm just at the mercy of the wind. However, if uh, I'm gonna wait, the visual cue that I use is the top of Shovel Knight's helmet. When it hits the ceiling, I'm going to dagger twice, and then I have to barely start holding right and then time my next dagger. Otherwise, the momentum from the dagger will push me into the spikes. So it's one, two, wait, dag, oof, too early. One, two, oh, wait, nope. I gotta time this carefully. One, two, hold right, dagger, photo dagger, nice. So that trick is uh, not too bad once you get used to it. Um, that saves like what, me... a full cycle and a half? Yeah, and it saves you like four or five seconds-ish. It's actually really, really good. I'm trying to... I'm now using Matt. Thank you, Madman, for this footage. <laughs> I hope it will work better with you than with me. <laughs> so you can see... 
Madman does this with three daggers, but I just uh, yeah. I have a slightly different setup. But you can see that you're just barely getting over this block, and then you dagger again. And you need to wait until you're over that block to dagger. Um, and then you barely have enough time to recover from the dagger animation to pogo, and then dagger one more time, and you're out of there. And the next trick, uh, I really hate this. <laughs> <laughs> this is a coin exclusive. This is a coin exclusive trick that I hate. Um, I'm going to die a bunch. Nice. Get under here. Oh, nice. Nice. I got that. Not too bad. Yeah. Yeah, that's a fun trick. So I will show what exactly is happening there. Yeah, that happened real fast. Yeah. <laughs> that's <laughs> Definitely the point of having this footage here. OK. So at the top of your jump here, I use the uh, propeller blades in the background as my cue. That's when I release the coin. And then you start holding down. Uh, and you'll pogo off of that coin. The wind is helping you out there. Um, and then you just barely make it up here. But then you have to immediately hold right and drop down so that you can get under this ledge before the wind pulls you up into the spikes. And then you get this magic pot which allows you to do the quick kill that you're about to do. So then you just reach the magic pot, you get out with three daggers, and you're through the room. And you, you saw for the first attempt of Mumu that he died into the spikes immediately. And uh, you actually skipped the, the previous checkpoint, so if you die here, you're losing a lot of time. <laughs> <laughs> and and uh, the, there is there is no backup. If you fail it, you you will die. The, the wind blows you into the spike, and you're dead. That's it. You either you either do it or you die. So uh, a lot of these tricks are uh, at your own discretion. But we are going to show off as many of the cool tricks that, that we can here. So next is the uh, propeller knight fight. I actually do like this fight. Uh, I'm going to show off what it looks like without the coin, um, just so you can see. Uh, this is an example of uh, you. You hit the boss, and it no longer has the ability to physically hurt you. Uh, propeller is going to be lunging back and forth. Uh, and so if you time it right, um, you can actually deal all of these hits per pass. So it's one, two, three, four, five, six. One, two, three, four, five, six, one, two. And then show off low percent, why not? So if you wanted to nice. make this a little bit faster and way harder, you would use the coin. And then you would finish with the dagger at any percent. And the boss just melts in seconds, so I'm gonna definitely make sure I explain what's going on with the footage. So what you're doing here is you are throwing a coin on the way down. Oh, got to make sure I have the footage up. There we go. Throwing a coin on the way down and then hitting propeller during these lunges. Now, it's important that you make sure you're hitting propeller during the lunges and not when propeller is resting, because every time you strike, propeller is going to start moving. So that was one, two, three, four, five, six, plus the one coin hit. And if you look at the top right, that is seven hits total. If you do any more than this, Propeller will immediately fly to this corner of the screen, and you won't be able to finish him off quickly. Um, after that sixth hit, you jump a little bit to the right, and then you throw your coin, and you still have to time your strike to hit Propeller during the lunge. And this manipulation means that not only will you get the extra damage on Propeller, but propeller will fly to the left instead of flying over to the right. So from here, you would do one, two, and then on the way up, pogo. And if you have the dagger because you're doing any percent, there's only three hits left, and propeller just dies. This is, is really hard to get, especially with the coin. But, but the, the any percent one is way easier than the low percent one, where you don't have uh, extra mobility with a uh, with a dagger. Yeah, I, I again, I would tell you if you're going to learn how to play this game, the King Knight, the Specter Knight, the Propeller Fight, and the uh, Polar Fight, all four of those will teach you different fundamentals of how to fight as Shovel Knight with shovel canceling, and 
once you master any of those quick kills, you become so much better at this game. Um, so, what time is it? How much time are we on right now? Let me see. 157? Okay. Uh, I will go ahead and wait to get into Clockwork Tower. Clockwork Tower will be the next stage, and uh, yeah, there's a ton of neat stuff here. Good to uh, take a small break, then. Okay. So like we did before, we're going to take another break here. Uh, for Hotfix, we like to encourage healthy behavior. Make sure people get an opportunity to get up, stretch, refill water, take care of yourselves. I refilled my water earlier, but I'm probably still going to take another stretch break. We encourage any of you all who've been watching the entire time to do the same. And as a quick reminder, Hotfix is funded in part thanks to your subscriptions and bits. We'd appreciate it if you would consider, sub consider subscribing. If you missed the first part of the show, uh, all of our VODs will be show up on our YouTube. You can catch all of our past broadcasts there as well. And if you want to see any of the upcoming shows on Hotfix, you can go to gamesdonequick.com slash hotfix. If you tune in tomorrow, we're going to have a Golden Sun, the I think it's the Lost Age. Uh, there's going to be a Golden Sun race tomorrow starting at noon. And it's going to be with the top four top runners. It's going to be Plexa, Bowie the Hero, Bluzer, and Velissa. So, hope Everyone tunes in for that if you're interested, and we'll be back in just a few minutes with more Shovel Knight. Welcome back, everyone, to our Shovel Knight tutorial showcase that we've been calling How to Train Your Shovel Knight. We've got Mumu, Akai, Magic Madman, and Tolu here helping break us down. Speed tech, quick kills, other just techniques to go through a speed run of Shuffle Knight. Been having a lot of fun so far. Hope everybody who's been hanging out in chat has been as well. We just finished a quick little break and we're going to be continuing onwards. I think Mumu had a something else he wanted to show before we continued onwards. Well, what is this you're going to show us here, Mumu? So part of the show is going to be, yes, these are all the really, really dumb things that you can do in this game. And here are the more practical ones that you can do. This one is, again, for the people at home, go ahead, pull up your console. If you have... Uh, if you have the propeller dagger and you have about 100 magic, uh, you should be able to do this one too. This is actually hilarious. Uh, this is the Phantom Striker quick kill, TM. This is another one of those wandering fights. Yeah. It's really hard. <laughs> <laughs> nice. Well played. <laughs> so just spam the, the, the propeller dagger. Okay, got it. Dude. I love this oh, fight. <laughs> Uh, yeah. <laughs> it's it's not that hard. Um, that also kind of works on the Mr. Hat. So uh, if uh, either of those fights had you tearing your hair out, there you go. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so we'll go ahead. Uh, you can go ahead and start the timer. We're here in Clockwork Tower. So uh, first things first, um, we would normally go the long way around this room. Boo. Um, this one's kind of hard. Nice. Managed to skip that. So the way I'm doing that is because normally if you try and like run with the coin, you won't be able to pogo it. But because you land on the conveyor belt uh, before the coin does, you can just barely catch up to it. And then you can pogo off of it. That also works in reverse if you uh, use the coin like that. And you, can... you would have to shovel it to get up there, but you can... Um get up there with uh, a shovel and a puzzle up to the ladder. So either way works. Just a neat little thing you can do. Now for the Clockwork Tower, um, now that we have the Propeller Dagger, um, a lot more of the movement is just going to be the uh, dagger itself. Uh, and that means that every bit of magic that you pick up is extremely valuable. This is pretty standard stuff for Shovel Knight. Using recoil, you can just kind of bounce off the wall and get on the ladder. And I'm going to try this. I was not even able to get this in practice. Madman got this, goes <laughs> for this and runs. I hate this trick. <clears throat> yeah. I don't like it uh, either. Don't worry. <laughs> Make sure I have uh, Clockwork Tower here on S Trainer. So um, normally, if you go through this room, 
you do this. That's the low percent way. Or um, you would dagger over here, which doesn't really save you a ton of time. But then you can do this instead, where you coin... <sighs> ah. I'll try it again. This is so hard. You have to dagger over the coin, because if you try and dagger into the coin, you'll bounce off of it. So you're daggering over the coin, and then you're hitting it so that you can bounce up there. And Madman definitely has footage of this, which I appreciate, because I'm never going to get this. <laughs> that sounds very hard. It's so dumb. Yeah, it's totally dumb. <laughs> Look at how low he was when he did that. What the heck? Let me uh, try and go frame by frame on this so we can really appreciate how stupid this is. The immediate coin jump, the lowest dagger possible. And then you have to turn around and hit the thing just so you can skip having to go around. Very fantastic. Cool. I'm so glad someone came up with that. <laughs> That's... That's hard. Wow. Okay, so barring that, uh, you would go over here. And then this is where you would pick up the mobile gear. This is going to be the last weapon that um, Shovel Knight picks up. You come talk to Chester. It costs 4,000 gold. If you did the propeller fight fine, then you would get the mobile gear at this point. Then you would get that magic. One, two, three... One, two, and uh, I'll explain the mobile gear once I get to a room where I'm going to use it. But I love getting to spam the dagger for these couple rooms. So now here's the mobile gear. <clears throat> so what this thing does is uh, if the gear itself just hits something right now, it deals one hit. If it's moving when it hits something, it deals a full heart, so that's two hits. And you can get on top of it, and it'll jump when it goes off of a ledge. Um, and it does move very slightly faster than Shovel Knight. So, uh, in this next room, there's a skip that not only requires it, but also does make you move a little bit faster. So you would get over here, and then you would not have to worry about these spikes. You would dagger twice over here, get on your gear, do a little dance. Without dying, please don't die doing that, you'd be really sad. Here on, it's not too terrible to get to the rest. That uh, was to get through the rest. Of the more of you spamming your jump and attack button on that yes. narrow hallway. Yes, that was to specifically get past the rat. And then from here, I'll be getting uh, through an auto scroller, which is a uh, another reminder since this is just some time to kill. Um, if anyone has any questions about anything that's going on, uh, feel free to ask. We'll do our best to answer them. Um, this is not just show and tell, this is also a Q&A um, from the runners. We have uh, Tolu, Magic Madman, and myself, and we also have some of the other Shovel Knight runners in chat. I saw David TKI at Northpath. Uh, Kenny is also a Shovel Knight runner. So uh, really appreciating all the support that we're getting for this showcase. <clears throat> so someone is asking how many hours you have been uh, doing these. How long have I... Well, this show has been going on for about two hours. Uh, a little bit more than that. Uh, if the question is about how many hours I've been playing Shovel Knight, I have almost 2,500 hours on this game. <laughs> uh, probably more than that, because that's only counting my Steam. So next we have um, the Tinker Knight fight. This is actually one of the hardest fights in the game. Um, to optimize, anyway. You throw a mobile gear, and then it one-shots him. And that surely is challenging. Uh, but then the floor breaks, and then you have this really awful fight uh, where I'm going to be using the coin. I'm going to try and go for it without um, stopping here. That's close enough. Not a bad kill. Woo. Nice. Really nice. So I'm going to show off what the best version of that kill looks like. Uh, but essentially what you're doing is you're using the dust knuckles um, to stay afloat in the air. 
and you're using the coin to gain some extra height. So I'm trying to find the spot. Thank you once again, Madman, for this footage. You're welcome. <laughs> so I'm the still setup... not, not happy with this skill, but yeah. <laughs> there are so many ways. This is a choose drone adventure book, in my opinion. There's so many ways to do this fight. So long as you're doing it fast, reminder, this is world three. You're almost half an hour into your 45 minute run. If you screw this up and you lose like 15 seconds on your run, you're just going to be really sad. So you can see, um, I try to stand roughly, um, there are these uh, tiles on the floor. About the fifth one in is where you're roughly standing. And then you can see Tinker Knight appearing in the background. Once his uh, arm appears, you jump, throw the coin, you knuckle it once, and then you can't see it because it's in the background. This is this is what makes this trick so hard to do, and this is one of the biggest time saves for the coin. You're juggling it behind Tinker. You just have to assume you know where it is twice. Then you jump up and pogo off of it, and then you're going to hit Tinker on the way up, and this is the first possible moment that Tinker can take damage. Pogo, and then Madman actually goes for even harder strats, where if you dust nice. knuckle four times, you get a somersault, and you won't have as much control of Shovel Knight. You'll fall down a lot more. So Madman does three knuckles, falls down for like a single frame, and then does four knuckles to get back and forth. Oh, sorry, just two knuckles there. Pogo, and then you have to get into position very quickly, throw the mobile gear onto Tinker Knight's shoulder, and hit it um, as soon as possible, because... When Tinker Knight starts moving, the mobile gear won't actually move with his shoulder. It'll stay in place and then fall off. The rolling gear hits um, Tinker Knight's face. You jump over the shoulder, and then you knuckle on the way to the left, which you can get hit out of. So you do three knuckles here. Pogo. One, two, three. Pogo and charge slash. So I want to show this again at full speed, just so you can all appreciate how truly magical this fight is. Pogo. One, two, two, three. One, two, three, Pogo. One, two, three, Pogo, charge slash. How easy phase one is, is made up infinitely by how hard phase two is. Yeah. This is the, the hardest kill uh, in the run uh, for me. Well, this strat, this specific strat. If you can get it, can do... cool. it's, it's like, if you don't want to do it, in fact, I'll show, show off really quickly. Um, if you just want to fight Tinker Knight without using the coin. Uh, check out the charge slash switch. <laughs> okay, so normally at this point, um, the other way of doing this fight is you wait for the missiles. And you can actually clip through them as they land on you. Uh, and I fell down. And so you can see that this fight can go wrong in a lot of ways. Uh, a backup would be to wait for the, uh, the bouncing ball. You can also reflect these missiles back at Tinker Knight's face. Trying to get back up there. Oh, it's fine. Reminder that you take a ton of damage from uh, having the Conjurer's Code on. Fun casual strats. I trust. Trust me. I did the kill the first time. So you can see how quickly this fight can get out of hand. Three, four. Okay. So next I'm going to be going to um, the Stranded Ship, and this is a stage where magic really comes into play because uh, you can spam, there's so much open space that you can spam the dagger quite a lot. In this first run, um, the way this uh, beetle is walking around, you can actually run up to it, flip it, and then pogo off of it. And you want to take this lower route. Oops because in this dirt block over here, there's actually a little five magic in that little dirt block. Let me make sure I have stranded ship. Go. <clears throat> so 
so knowing where all the magic is is just as important um, because you're going to need every every single five magic is like that's a dagger right there and you have to also be able to switch back and forth between your weapons quickly switch to the gear it gives you just enough height to grab this ladder Knuckle these guys, they give you a little five magic. One, two, three. Using the jump canceling um, attack. So now you can see that all the tricks that we've kind of gone over at this point are starting to come together. Yeah. Nice. It's a fairly tricky movement. Oh, I can't believe I only hit one of those. Okay. Knuckle <laughs> through these guys. And I'm specifically trying to conserve my magic because I normally wouldn't have. Ooh, big magic drop. So if you ever see a big magic drop, congratulations. It's time to go fast. Nice. That would be extremely exciting in a regular uh, Yeah. Almost dying would not be exciting. That would be terrifying! Cool, I'm fine. Not planned. Okay, so this at this point you would normally have just about no magic. And I will be showing off now the, uh, the last room, which is quite tricky here. This is what gives a lot of people trouble. Uh, Shoutouts to up plus attack. Um, so if you're playing this game, you can bind um, the relic button you can bind the ability to use relics to a single button. You can see sub weapon is, uh, for me, it's on right button. Um, you could also have a shortcut where it's uh, up plus attack. And if you do that, it is really hard to do what I just did, where I used um, the knuckle while I'm on the ladder. And the reason why you want to be able to do that is because in this room with the, um, the hammer bros, this guy, if I had this with up plus attack, I'd be I would I would grab the ladder more often than I would actually use the knuckle on him. So, a little tip for you guys, um, everyone in chat, if you want to do this, uh, make sure you have a relic button bound. It will really help you out. And so now here's the last room. I'm gonna try and do this really quickly. And I died really quickly. Nice. Two dagger pogo. One two. Okay, barely made that. So I'm gonna nice. bring up Madman's footage now, so you can see some of the precise ways to get this room done. So, on this first dirt block, or uh, snow block really, you normally can't jump high enough to get up there. Um, using the dust knuckle allows you to clip right through it, just like we did in Explodatorium. Uh, Madman does the, uh, the knuckle through that first snow block. Gets really uncomfortably low! And then you want to knuckle through that snow block because it has a giant magic pot in it. And this is the strat that he would go for in his runs. I died the first time I did that. <laughs> uh, I died immediately, so you can tell how hard that is already. And I believe this is you doing it um, the uh, standard way. This is the way yeah. that I just so the way I would do it is uh, you would jump up here and knuckle through these blocks, and then you would fall and then knuckle through the last two blocks instead of doing that incredibly terrifying low dagger. <laughs> Even though you do one at the very end, but the, the setup for that is not too bad. And so now I have uh, two quick kills for Polar Knight. I'm going to show off mine first. Um, I learned this one, and then uh, Mad Mana has his own one. Uh, this is going to make use of holding left and right at the same time again. Um, I'm going to be sticking with Polar Knight while using the mobile gear. Normally, when I used to do any percent of this, I had the Chaos Orbs. Uh, but if I were to do runs now, the only weapon I would really have is the mobile gear, because you barely have enough magic to use it. And coins are so expensive, they cost 8 magic compared to the gear, which is 6 magic. I'm going to try this kill a couple times. Ah, 
I'm going to be doing this charge slash to reflect the snowball. That's too slow. Yeah. You need to do this, like, really, really quickly. There we go. Ah, I screwed up the ending, but I'm going to try it one more time. Okay, got a little bit away from me, that's fine. So by using left and right, you saw me sticking nice. Polar Knight very hard. Um, again, I'm, I'm holding the controller like this, basically, in order to be able to do that. Uh, and that's so that I can hit him with the charge slash to the right and then move to the left, following him along while I'm doing um, shovel canceling. And that's the best way you can do that fight without the use of additional weapons. Now, what Madman recorded is a 100% variation of this fight. <clears throat> I learned it because Mumu told me it's cool to see. It is cool to see. <laughs> so um, it's, it's so hard to do. In 100%, you would have the option of using the Flare Wand to get an extra hit. Pogoing to use the Chaos Orb. So now, Chaos Orb 1, just hit once. This one will hit a, a second time. They'll bounce back. Hit Polar Knight a third time while Madman is doing a Charge Slash. And because they're following Polar Knight along, there goes Zelf, mm -hmm. just melts away. Kills him before he even leaves the screen. Does he so do that flare like, on. plow attack What's because up? you're standing so far away? Like, can you manipulate his movement, or do you have, is that relying on some luck? All of it is based on how much damage um, Polar Knight has taken. So you have to make sure that you're waiting a specific amount of time for Polar okay. Knight to, to do these specific attacks. You do too much damage too early, Polar Knight jumps straight up immediately. So you wait just a little bit. That's why Madman is uh, using a Charge Slash along with the Chaos Orbs. The Chaos Orbs will then force Polar Knight's movement, and then following him along deals additional damage every time the damage frame is refreshed. So it's, there's the Flare Wand shot. Pogo, two Orbs, Charge Slash, one, two, three, four, five, six, and dead. Bless you. <laughs> nice uh, Flare Wand for show. That looks really cool. So, uh, I'm going to try to do this once, um, mostly because it'd be a, a super pain to try and show this off more than once. Uh, this is Dream 3. There is a quick catch for Dream 3, just like Dream 2. Uh, I'm probably not going to get it. Oh, wait. <laughs> I think you have too much uh, health, Mumu. No, I've already... That's one thing, but also I'm on a completed file, so I'm not going to get the Dream sequences. Oh. <laughs> uh, Madman, would you mind actually showing that off then? If you would mind uh, opening up your uh, yeah. uh, your practice for Dream 3. Uh, so Madman is going to take over now and finish up the game. Um, we're going to go straight to Dream 3, and then we're going to finish up the uh, last few stages of the run. So you can go ahead and switch over to Madman's feed. Oh, this is the one. Uh, yeah. Oh, let, let me see actually that I am showing my game. Yeah. Yep. I'm gonna use trainer to TP to the boss fight. I'm gonna show try it. this fight. Ah, way too early. Polar Knight is not one of those uh, very hard fights to do the back. <laughs> nice. <laughs> to, do, to do a backup kill for. Um, again, Polar Knight is a really good fight to uh, practice uh, your shovel canceling. That'd be hilarious if that just took you off the screen. It, it cannot, unfortunately, but. Yeah. Yeah. It'd be very funny, though. Yeah, I agree. If you do that during the propeller fight, uh, you can fall to your death and still get the victory. <laughs> So just like Let's in Dream see. 2, um, good luck. This is pretty difficult. Um, the start, you're just kind of standing around taking damage. That was too early. You're, ooh, so close. You did get hit yeah. properly. Try and catch Shield Knight in the air. This is not what you want. 
And uh, let's see. You going for the same like sleep slide thing? Yeah. Yeah, exactly. Uh, it took Crazy. so long between finding Dream 2 and Dream 3. Like, when Speedfrog found Dream 2, uh, we were like, okay, but like Dream 3 is impossible to do that with. Then like a year and a half later, he was like, oh, hey, you can do it in Dream 3. <laughs> So you take two damages on purpose, and you do a full jump, pogo twice on his helmet. And here there is a bit of RNG. So this guy can sometimes uh, get pogoed by you. Uh, if so, you have to, to dagger earlier than uh, the, the usual. Uh. And this should end on the slide. Just like before. Okay. Yeah. So now comes the final world. And uh, this stage is pretty much straightforward. There are a few tricks. Like uh, the next room. Uh, well, I will do it. So since it was a, a bit fast, uh, I will show. If, I think I have a footage of it. Okay. So as soon as you enter the room, there is there is a boot book you have to activate in order to to make some platform spawn. So I I just walk off the the ledge and uh, pogo it. Uh, I use the dagger. You can use it a bit earlier, actually, but it's not really relevant. And here you want to jump uh, late enough to be able to pogo a fish, which will come. Uh, he's triggered uh, when you come by, so he, he's always here to catch you. And then, man, you have the, uh, so you have, you have the gameplay. If, if you if you jump, oh, you don't have the gameplay. Oh, sorry. <laughs> Can I go back? Okay. So you fall off the, the ledge to activate the, the book to make the platform spawns. You use a dagger. And you wait to be at the end of, of this platform to jump. If you, if you jump too early, you will get hit by, by this fish. You will be too low to, to poke him. So you poke it twice. And you can just finish the room with the dagger. Okay. So you have my game. Yep. Next one, you should do all the way around using the, the moving platform. But you can actually just fall down with a, a mobile gear. I wasn't sure it was there, so I'm gonna redo it. And you can jump just barely enough to skip the room. Yeah, it's pretty. Simple. Yeah, you use two daggers and two oops, two dust knuckles to go through the the griffin. Okay, the so next one I, I'm not sure it's. I, I will show you a not uh, uh, a safe threat. If you do it, you, you will die probably. I'm a, I was too late. Gonna redo it. So this this strat is, is uh, really hard to get. You have to use your dagger at the right time. And if you're a tiny bit late, you, you won't get it. This is a 100% strat to get this music sheet on the fastest possible cycle. Oh. Oops. Yeah, you can dust knuckle through those guys. Ah, that's really bad. <laughs> that was so unlucky. So this uh, this spot is on a global cycle as uh, the previous one in uh, the Explodatorium. 
So since I have I had no clue on which cycle I was uh, I didn't make it. This room is pretty straightforward. Uh, you just dagger into the wall to make the fairy spawn. I did not know you could dagger underneath that slime samurai. <laughs> oh, you didn't. Oops. So this room, I don't remember how we we did it uh, past in the days, but we we went in the in the mid uh, section, like uh, towards this guy here. But now you we go upward. I'm gonna do it. We make sure to kill those two guys to to take some extra magic. Never have too much magic. Here yeah, we just dagger through our ways. Oops. Some fairly straightforward gaming. Fun fact for 100%, um, you break almost every checkpoint. So, you know, if uh, you enjoy being completely terrified of uh, everything, every mistake you make, um, just play 100% where you uh, don't have any safety yeah. whatsoever. <laughs> So it's just because you need that much gold in 100%? Yeah, you only don't break like two checkpoints and they're so far out of the way you don't even touch them, so... So coming next is uh, the refight of Black Knight. It's actually the third one. And this, you, you can still stand lucky, but the, the timing is uh, tighter. And uh, since we have uh, the charge slash and the mobile gear, we, we try to go for an even harder strat. So, I will try to do it live. This is really, really cool. Compared to the regular Black Knight stun lock of just smacking him into a corner, which you can do, but it's like a it's like a one or two frame window. Um, they were like, you know what? That's not fast enough. Yeah, I missed it. I'm gonna die on purpose. So I don't have the, the dialogues with uh, the Enchantress again. And I'm gonna retry it. So mobile game. Ah. Okay, now I can redo it uh, more quickly. I'm gonna give it some tries, and I, if I fail too much, I'm just gonna keep going and show the, the footage, which is more clear. Ah, oh, come on. Because of Black Knight having iframes, the only way you can deal increased damage to Black Knight is by hitting him on the same frame that the gear makes contact with Black Knight. I'm assuming that does three damage? Oh the gear yeah, that does. Yeah, if, if, it's, it's hard to notice because it's happening so fast, but the gear itself will do a full heart, and then um, Shovel Knight's swing will do the extra half hit. Yeah, I believe that's the only way to do 3 damage to anything in this game. You just have to hit it with something that is 2 damage and like 1 damage at the same time. Okay, let's keep going. No, oh, let me stun lock you. So, we want to stun lock him because when he starts to fly around, he starts to be really annoying. And I'm not used to, to this part of the kill anymore, so... Just gonna try to survive. This is, um, so what we're doing is, uh, this is an explanation slash showcase for uh, not only uh, difficult quick kills, but um, some of the hardest tricks that you can do in the run in general. Uh, so this is not going to be a, a non-stop speed run. We are stopping to explain everything that's happening. Um, yeah. Black Knight, uh, currently Magic Madman was trying to do the uh, quick kill for, for Black Knight, um, but in order to advance, he just has to kill the fight. So now he's going to show off the footage for the actual quick kill, which is uh, a very tricky quick kill to execute. Yeah. So, as soon as this, the fight starts, you are going to throw your mobile gear and you jump on it. When he stops laughing. Okay. 
and uh, you want to space a bit your your attacks. You don't want to go straight towards him because, you, as Momo said, you want to time the moment the mobile the mobile gear will hit him with the moment you will hit it with your shovel, which is for me right now. So as you can see, he has lost two point health, and, and now he lost he, he lost uh, three more points because he took the mobile gear plus my attack. Then you continue with a normal stun lock until you reach the end of the of the screen. And here you can do some transition with normal attack and chart slash to finish him. And yes, the, this stun lock is harder than the, the first one because uh, we don't really know actually. The... But uh, if, if you don't attack him in, uh, in the face, during the, the the stun lock, he tends to break the stun lock and uh, go away. Unless you are using charge slash, we don't know why it works. Well, there's many things that are strange about this fight, but as long as it can be fast, uh, it's perfect. Gonna go back to my to my game. Um, I believe the reason it's harder is just because he has um. He he can he has more options that he can do right on when he's uh, right when he's recovering he can like transform or he can like do a bunch of other stuff as well so that's that's why I think it's harder. Yeah, you're right. When uh, when I was programming um, some of my bosses, I basically put into them, hey, if you have this much HP and you're not doing something else, then you can do this attack, and I think that's basically what Black Knight's doing. So here I'm underwater, so I fall slowly. Yep. There is actually a cool trick here that I missed. So the end of the propeller dagger won't give you a, a knockback if you hit something. Like this, this wall, you can break it with a dagger and keep going without having a knockback. So the next room you have to follow this way with some rats. There is this archer annoying you. Or some rats. But, but you can actually dodge pretty much everything if you go down. And this is to show you that you can die easily. <laughs> <laughs> this bottom route is kind of cursed. So uh, this is actually a faster way of going through this room. Uh, you have to not get hit and not die. Ooh. Very nice. And so next room, maybe Mumu wants to explain what we is will going on. <laughs> I can show the room. Okay, so in the next room, there's a ton of slime enemies and fire droplets, and this room we we call the uh, the Mario Maker room, just because this is the kind of level I would expect to see in Mario Maker. Uh, <laughs> on the far right side, um, there are three uh, dirt blocks. One of them has a slime in it. And when you're pogoing, um, you want to make sure that you're hitting the dirt blocks because that's the only thing you need to get through the room. Uh, but because of the fact that there's a slime in the way, normally you would bounce off of the slime. If you delay your pogo, the hitbox of your shovel is actually so low, it will hit the dirt block underneath the slime without actually hitting the slime. Yeah. I think you get to do, uh, do that on dirt blocks, but it's really hard, so I'm going to try to do that. Yeah, I missed it. I'm gonna put my respawn here, actually. Yeah, there this one go. this one isn't too bad to show off. But you could see that uh, despite the dirt block, uh, despite the slime enemy being in the way, Magic Madman was able to hit the, the dirt block beneath it. Let's keep Oop. to the room. Okay. What is my speed? Okay. Footage. Footage is better. <laughs> okay, let's go. So I'm using the dust knuckle five times to reach this point. Then you just jump. And there, there is a slime here. I cancel my pogo animation with an attack. And right here, I start to, to pogo again. And you can see that there is a little explosion here, showing us that the 
the dirt block has been hit and it will explode. Yeah, that has to be a very delayed pogo for you to be able to start your pogo low enough that it hits the dirt block. Yeah. And sometimes, if you are not lucky, this slime can actually start to, to do a jump animation before falling and it can hit you. Yeah, that's really sometimes. epic. I love when it jumps in midair. <laughs> It looks like you hit both at the same time because the slime also did a hit animation, right? Yeah, you you hit the slime as well, but you you take the the uh, you are pogoing like if you were only pogoing the the dirt block because you don't get get uh, as much as much uh, height. Yeah, pogoing off the dirt block is just a very small bounce compared to pogoing off of enemies. Some, sometimes we, you you will uh, have the pogo of the the slime sometimes of the dirt block. I don't know what makes uh, the difference. Go back to my game. Uh, the next room, uh, I think it's one of the biggest nightmare in this campaign for ca ca casual players <laughs> because they don't know a thing. That is really essential. Can actually go up there and just keep the majority of the room just like that uh, nice hug yeah oh yeah uh, I don't know if you mentioned this before in the, the stranded ship level but right there you saw madman actually use the the backside of the uh, the charge slash to actually move that uh, statue around which is very oh, very yeah. helpful ah uh, yes that's the uh... Taiwan Strat. <laughs> uh, Taiwan Ninja um, was the one who found uh, the use for that in uh, Stranded Ship. If you stand in front of the statue and you use a charge slash uh, with your back against it, it'll hit it while you're on the front of it. If you're doing a low percent run, do not take any music shit. Even if the, <laughs> the last one you saw is intenting, don't take it because your run will be invalid. Oh, something that Madman's doing right now. Uh, if you happen to be in a dirt block while it is off screen, it doesn't have collisions. So you can actually skip um, a lot of the difficult portions of this auto scroller just by racing ahead of it. Oh my. So there is some, some health here, as you can see. <laughs> in the left wall, right? As just you can case. see. It's just a funny way of putting <laughs> that, because we can't. Uh, so this is going to be boss rush. This is actually really, really cool. Um, compared to all the regular fights, the boss rush fights are sometimes very similar or very different. Uh, not only do you have an increased move pool in terms of what weapons you have access to, um, but you also have uh, slightly a different room layout. Um, you, yeah. When you're fighting uh, Spectre, for example, the floor is a little bit higher, so you can't do the same quick kill. And there's no ceiling this room either. And uh, yeah, you take more damage, so that makes some fights really, really hard. And so the, so the no ceiling after, means after, that... After, Sorry, go ahead. Uh, like, if you remember, uh, against King Knight, we were abusing Pogos because there was a ceiling uh, making us uh, go back uh, quickly on the ground. But here there, there will be no ceiling. You will uh, uh, you will see that because there is a big room and there is no ceiling uh, at the top of the room. Uh, the order of the of the night is purely random, except that uh, Polar Knight has a rule. He will come a bit, uh, in the three first uh, three fight since he has uh, some spikes that can uh, one shot you. They made the, the thing a bit easier because it's really frustrating when do, when you die against the last uh, night of the of the bus rush. So I will do my best. Okay, starting with Spectre. Yeah, good luck. Focus on this. Oh boy, <sighs> keeping him juggle with charge slashes is really hard. Pitch into the gear. No. It Ooh, that's oh, fine. That's, that's really good, though. Like, wow. Not, not a bad fight at all. So, uh, no ceiling. Yeah, that's, that's not good. So, 
So this is one of the easiest fights, but I tend to fail it. <laughs> In this instance, we knew it was Polar Knight coming next, right? Yeah, because uh, the first one was Spectre, the second was King, so it was guaranteed to fight Polar, Polar Third. Oops, wrong items. Ah, that's not good. Well. The propeller okay. fight is uh, only slightly different in the sense that uh, propeller is guaranteed to do um, three sets of lunges instead instead of uh, maybe two. Always does three sets of lunges. Don't give me treasure, thank you. Every two fights, uh, you will have uh, some magic drop in the in the bell. Ah, that's not good. I don't know how many health I'm... The next I one. Am. I'm too low. Well, I'm gonna go for a backup. I, s I spend a lot of magic there, but it should be enough. Good enough. You can kill him a, a bit earlier. Okay, and last plague. Okay, that was good. Now you can save the, the knight if you want to, which I will do. As you can see, Spectre is bald. So we we lost uh, Mumu Railcoon. I don't know if you can put him oh, back in the yeah. in the vocal. I was transfixed on the boss kills that I didn't notice. <laughs> <laughs> So I have a footage of uh, some quick kills. Uh, I, I think I did it in uh, in the order we fight them in the in the game. Though. So we will start with King Knight. So since there is no ceiling, you want to do one charge slash uh, on your way down. There is nothing special apart from this. Okay, I'm gonna slow down a bit for Spectre because this one is in, is interesting. So you want to jump and start to to charge a, a charge slash, and you want to to land the charge slash as soon as possible. So you, so you will you have you will have time. He will have time to travel through you until you fall down, and you can hit him again on your way down. You can do another charge slash on your way up. Oh, come on. Yeah, you barely, have, you barely have the time you need to charge up another slash to be able to juggle Spectre Knight like this. Ordinarily, players would be doing this uh, with just regular shovel swings. So doing charge slash um, swing, charge slash swing to keep him pinned is incredibly difficult. Yeah. When you throw his sight, you can jump and, and land a charge slash and immediately throw a coin. So the coin will hit him now and here. You, uh, meanwhile, you put a gear down because the gear will hit is activated by by his sight, and it will hit him as. And you you want the gear to hit him as at the same time as you hit him with your shovel, because if you do that uh, distinct. 
He will start moving immediately. You can't uh, juggle him uh, on th against the wall. And you continue to juggle him, and uh, just like that, he dies in a uh, in few seconds. That is easily one of the coolest kills uh, for uh, boss rush. Yeah, that's really cool how he activates the gear himself. <laughs> it's so funny. <laughs> so for for Mole Knight, you have charge slash, so, so you can land land a charge slash and another hit. So here I'm pogoing because I find it easier than uh, trying to land a normal slash. And after his third uh, dash. You can throw, I throw a coin on the right because he will come back but down. I throw a gear as well, so he will take the coin. I, I try to charge a charge slash as well. And he will take two hits from the gear, another hit from the coin plus my charge slash. I pogo him. Here I try to hit him with the gear, but I failed. I, I, well, the gear hit him, but since it wasn't activated, it it didn't do uh, two damages, so he didn't die in the middle of the screen. He, he died uh, on the right. Okay, it can be a little bit uh, faster. Next up is Plague Knight. So Plague Knight is still RNG, uh, and uh, you 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 are using the dagger to follow him with when he's doing uh, big jumps. And you try to land some chart slashes when uh, when you can. This pattern is the easiest one for me, and the only one I really managed to to do properly. So I get stuck in the, between the the vats, and you can finish him. Uh, for treasure knight, I, I don't know if there is a real strat actually. Maybe a Persos managed to, to find uh, something, but generally I, I just go for it with a shovel cancel. Do you, you think... You... Uh, yeah, go ahead. The thing to remember about shovel canceling on the water is that because you're falling slower, you're trying to get three hits um, per jump instead of doing uh, jump, swing, land, swing, jump, swing, mm. land, swing. Yeah. And I think that Apersos go for actually in one jump, he do two slashes and one chart slash to optimize uh, the damages. Oh, and I didn't say it, but after each fight, you want to reposition yourself in the mid, in the middle of the of the room, but slightly to the left, because Polar Knight will spawn uh, at the opposite side uh, of you. So if you are a little bit on the left, he will go right. If you are a little bit to the right, he will he will go left. And uh, this is important because we we want to to use uh, the mechanic of uh, holding left and right at the same time, and to to follow him when he when he goes uh, towards us, so we can follow him and uh, do a ton of damages. This is proper. I think I take a hit in this footage, but. You will see a better fight than that what I did. As Mumu said, you you don't have to time your attack because it will always do three, uh, three sets of attack. And he dies uh, pretty quickly. Yeah, you don't. Uh, including those charge slashes is a thing that you can do on uh, the boss rush instead of the uh, the regular one on the stage, uh, and it's pretty hard to do that too. <laughs> So Tinker 1 is the same, you throw a gear and kill him. And Tinker 2 is mostly the same. Uh, you, you you just don't start uh, the fight with a, a slash into a pogo, you just pogo immediately. So I pogo, I do 3 dust knuckles into 3 dust knuckles into a pogo. I throw a gear, I got it. And then you, you do three charge slash, pogo, three three dust knuckles, forgive me, pogo and slash. So this fight uh, was easier back in the time before the release of King Knight campaigns because the gear uh, stayed on the shoulder of the of the robot. And now it doesn't follow the shoulder of the robot, so, so it, it falls uh, easily off the from it and you I'm struggling to, to do this fight uh, properly. 
thankfully it's it is doable exactly the same but it's a it's a lot more precise now well uh, before i was using one extra coin uh, during the fight so it, it was tiny bit faster a tiny bit so for polar knight i throw a coin as soon as possible then i, I switch to the gear and activate the gear as soon as he will take the the coin in, in his feet, he will start running at me, and it will be the perfect moment for me to land a chart slash, and a shovel cancel holding uh, right and left to follow him. And yeah, this is not the the best fight for for polar polar knight. And that he dies really quickly. And that oh, gear and you dropped it. when he's about to drop on top of you was uh. Because you'll hit that with your shovel while you're hitting him there, right? Yeah, exactly. Oh, and we didn't say a thing about this fight, actually. When, he's, when he falls down, uh, he will go on the side where he has the most distance to walk. So since he's on the left of the, the room, he will go run right. And uh, if, he, if he was... A tiny bit on the on the right here, and I was on the right. He would have uh, run on the left, and I wouldn't be able to kill him uh, quickly enough. So uh, generally, you you try to to make him fall down on the on the left side of the room, and that's it for the boss fight. So where is my game here? And yeah. Uh, I'm French, sorry. I have uh, quite a huge accent. Yeah, I think the person in chat was appreciating your accent more than needing <laughs> you to apologize for it. Oh, well, <laughs> thank you then, oh, thank you. you a lot. Can you switch to gameplay on your stream? So this room, you, you can just stand here and we, pogo the Jack blocks coming at you. Man. Oh, excuse me, I'm gonna restart the, the stage. So. I have strainer. I go to tower three and F seven. Okay, sorry. No so problem. this is the last stage of the of the run. And I I saw a lot of people struggling in this room because there are blocks coming at you. But there is this safe spot if you can say things like that, which was pretty well. Be sure to pogo. If you want to go fast, you can dust knuckle the last blocks or take a, a damage boost, but I I don't do it. And yeah, you can do we use one dagger, only one. It's important. <laughs> Otherwise, you, you would have uh, waste some magic because you you can only go to the next room uh, when you're down here. Uh, this room, the the floor is appearing when you go near it, but actually in speedrunning we just use uh, 9 daggers. <laughs> and here I, I can show that the, the, the mobile gear is slightly faster than you. A lot of runners end up doing that for swag as well, just because. Well, just riding the, the gear repeatedly? Riding the gear at all does make us go faster through the room, but like running off of it is not necessary. <laughs> That's just yeah. Yeah. Okay, so this is uh, the Enchantress. <clears throat> uh, I have nothing to say, I will just show you. Yeah, it's a very difficult quick kill. Ah, missed it. I'm gonna retry it. The goal is to do a specific amount of damage at the start of the fight before Enchantress does dives, and then uh, try and finish Enchantress off uh, as soon as the dives start. Uh, Ooh, not bad! That was a good one. Okay, pay attention here. This one is uh, this is where most of the time save for the coin comes. Oh, you're gonna... Okay, yeah, yeah. yeah. Uh, I'm gonna uh, show the, the fight first again in... Uh... A slower version. So I have a visual cue to well uh, throw my gear. When I pass this line, this pilar, I turn around and throw my gear here. 
you throw back two flames, you charge a charge slash, you land one. In the way down, you, you land a normal hit and you land a charge slash. Here's the mobile gear hits her. I, I'm not sure that the flame hits her here, but it's not really important. And you want to finish her as soon as possible with those uh, dives. The dives are RNG, so if you're not lucky, she will never be in, uh, in reach for you. If you're doing this with Chaos Orbs, you can always kill her guaranteed. But if you're not using yeah. the Chaos Orbs, you have to rely on some RNG from the dives. I, I could show the low percent strat, but I'm not sure that to, to nail it. I don't know if it's interesting. What do you think? <laughs> uh, go ahead and give it a shot. Go ahead and give it one shot at least. I don't really remember the beginning of the fight, but I'll try. So uh, in low percent, um, you wouldn't be able to do enough damage. Enchantress would end up on the bottom of the screen. And uh, you can deal six hits if Enchantress is at the bottom of the screen. Um, good luck. This is kind of unplanned. Ah. Uh, that's, that was really bad. I will restart the fight. It is neat though. This is actually one of the hardest tricks that I learned also when I started running this game because I started with low percent. Ah. Come on. I don't remember it, uh, that's why I'm struggling that much. Here, no! Well, I will show you the, the end of the fight. So, assume that she has around. No, I assume nothing. I will retry it one <laughs> one uh, one more time, and I will uh, keep going. I have no footage actually to show. So uh, what normally would happen at the end of the fight is Enchantress, if you did the fight correctly, would have about uh, six hits left or less, depending on how good you are uh, with dives. Um, that looks almost good. You would dig out two blocks, oh. and then I forgot to dig uh, the extra blocks. Well, you, you saw at the very end that uh, Madman was bouncing off of Enchantress and into the ceiling. Uh, that is the strat for low percent. Uh, it, yeah. it, is, it is cool and worth uh, bringing up, but it's certainly um, not something you would, uh, we were expecting. It's very difficult. You, you can land seven hits, but it's really hard when you are at the bottom of the screen. Six hits is, uh, is safe. Seven is really hard. And I think that 8 is doable, but it's uh, it's a legend more than a, a thing. <laughs> <laughs> Alright, so go ahead and kill her, and then uh, let's see the um, the big time save with the coin, which is uh, in the catch and in the last fight, which is kind of ridiculous. Like, you go the entire run, and then this is where you save most of your time with the coin. Maybe. Maybe. Because it's pretty hard to execute. No. So uh, what Madman was trying to do is um, while you're off screen, you're uh... actually go ahead. Yeah, pull up the footage. Yeah, that's easier. So you don't see it there, but I'm placing myself in a specific spot. It's my own setup, so you can do whatever you, you want. But here, I'm, I go on the right of the screen, and I do just one jump on the left. And when Shield Knight starts to fall, I do a full jump, throw a coin, dust knuckle it, juggle it. And there, for a strange reason, uh, the Dez gives you an extra jump mid-air uh, when, uh, when you change your state into the grabbing uh, grabbing shield uh, shield knight animation so you can reach her and grab her at the top of the screen and this is way faster than waiting for her to fall down yeah i think it saves like 16 seconds waiting for her to fall down comparatively and next it's another coin trick if you remember this fight casually uh you're supposed to use shield knight to get up there Oh my god, you made it! <laughs> I missed the end, but... That's okay, that's the hardest part. Good job. Nice. 
Very nice. Uh, yeah. I'm gonna show you the footage. Where is it? Here. So. As soon as the, the fight begins, you will throw your gear on this platform. And uh, you will activate it, jump and throw a coin. And since you are on the, the, the gear moving, you will be able to, to catch the coin to pogo it. So you throw it, you juggle it as soon as possible. You, you jump, juggle it, and you are able. Actually, I'm going to do it frame by frame. So it, it will be better, I think. OK. So I throw the, the gear when it's available to move. Ah, the next, the frame by frame is working. Okay, I activate it. I do a full jump. At the top of the jump, I throw my coin. I run on the right. I juggle the coin when I'm falling down. Come on, do it. Do it. <laughs> Don't do that. So, I throw the coin, I juggle it once, I jump, juggle it a second time, I use my pogo as soon as possible, uh, holding right and, and uh, bottom and down, and it gives you enough height to, to be able to start uh, dust knuckling, so the weak point of the enchantress. If node, stop freezing. Yeah, this is absolutely one of the hardest tricks at all in this game. Uh, and this is one that you would be expected to do if you pick up the coin for your route. <laughs> Go back. Not too much. Damn it. It's broken. So okay. once you... Uh, I lost my... You... you can see the catch again. Okay, I'm just gonna let it go uh, slowly. It should work. Go ahead, uh, Mumu. So uh, once you get up there, you're using knuckles to stay level, and you only do three knuckles so that you don't get the somersault, and you barely have enough time to do one, two, three, one, two, three, pogo, one, two, three, one, two, three, pogo. And if you do it just like that, you won't trigger um, the last attack where the enchantress kind of flies off to the side. You have just enough time and just enough hits uh, to do that kill. And that's just like yeah. on the, um, I don't remember his name, the the guy you instant killed. Tinker Knight? Here. Yeah, Tinker, it's just like Tinker Knight where you like fall just for a few frames to make sure you don't get the fourth hit. Yeah, yeah. exactly. And if you don't want to use the coin and the gear to get up there early, uh, you can just wait for Shield Knight, uh, and that costs you like another 20 seconds as well. So you save almost a full minute on the last two things you do in this game at any percent. Yeah. And it's really easy to 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 miss them. Because uh, the the shield knight catch uh, you need to to start it uh off screen, you don't see your character. And uh, generally if you are in PV pace and uh, you you are against the, the final boss, you you tend to to be a bit stressed, and uh, you might fail easily the, the the final trick of the run. Yeah, and that's time. Yep, we saved a shield knight, or oh, she saved us. So we don't really know. So, is is there any other question? The VLC was uh, the way to, to show some footage without using YouTube or other things. Yeah, VLC is a, a pretty handy player. The The bitrate is uh, a little difficult when you're zooming back and forth so much through the footage, but um, it is nice to be able to just go frame by frame on VLC players so you can see all the things that are happening uh, step by step. Yeah, I'm not sure what was causing that. It must have just been some error during encoding that happens sometimes. Um... Because usually in VLC, like when you do frame by frame, it doesn't cause those issues. Yeah, I, I'm not used to VLC, so I don't really know, Yeah, to be honest. 
I tried to fix it uh, yesterday. It worked uh, pretty well, and uh, until until uh, this evening, that was no big deal. Um, we did manage to show off quite a lot, uh, and uh, thank you yeah. so much for uh, for doing oh, like a huge bulk of like the end game. Well, it's a pleasure, and uh, in the credits you can see the previous world record for any percent. Now it's sub forty, sub forty two by Smoggy as well. Yeah. So shootouts to to the community of Shamlight. Yeah, obviously that doesn't get updated super frequently, given that it would require like pushing a patch. But it's yeah, cool that they include uh, it in the credits. It is really uh we we absolutely appreciate that from Yacht Club. Uh, at this point, yeah. I don't think there's going to be any patch that would update any of the any percent runs. So anyone who's who's got the uh, recce right now is going to be uh, engraved forever, um, except for Madman, <laughs> unfortunately. Um, <laughs> yeah. Batman has the King Knight any percent record uh, but uh, they're not pushing out any more patches so uh, just shout outs to Madman for being really good at King Knight too <laughs> thank you That's so one a lot thing of... I would ask is um, yeah? you mentioned in the beginning some things that beginners could do uh, if they're just getting into the run with like the flare rod getting the chaos orbs what is like probably the most important thing like of the the harder things that you think people should pick up as they're starting to like trying to level up their speed run like what are the, the next steps from like uh, beginner steps to trying to move into it more advanced i think that the biggest step is taking the conjurer's code to have uh, extra magic and uh, because having more magic gives you more use of the dagger and uh, it gives you a lot of uh, of speed as you could see and generally, beginners don't take the Conjurer's Code because of the extra damages you're taking. I would say if uh, if someone is going to learn this game, um, first and foremost, you have to get the Dust Knuckle, the Mobile Gear, and the Propeller Dagger. Those are the three items you have to yeah. get. Uh, yeah. And then from then on, you're just like, OK, what do I want my weapon to be? The Flare Wand, the Chaos Orbs, or the Alchemy Coin. Now, any, even a beginner can go with the Alchemy Coin if they really want to. You just have to know that in order to make up the time for it, you're going to have to do much, much harder tricks. Uh, and then beyond that, I would say way more important than what you end up picking up in the run is just level familiarity. Um, just play the game. Uh, if you go through the levels uh, and just practice in general, uh, you're going to be way less likely to die and lose. Like, just do Deathless. Deathless is the biggest type save. <laughs> yeah. And uh, yeah, training the boss fights is uh, a huge uh, thing as well. We have a, uh, a, an emote on the server that is called Boss Rush because that's where a lot of people choke and die. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I can relate. So uh, I, start, I started to, to run the, the game on uh, low percent to, to get familiar with the uh, the normal setup of uh, Shovel Knight. And uh, when I got the, the Conjurer's Coat on any percent, it was a real nightmare to, to go through the, the boss rush. I, I died uh, at least two times every boss rush, so yeah. Training your boss fights, it's important. The other question I would ask is you mentioned earlier in the tutorial that. Uh, no matter how people want to try and do the speedrun, beginner strats, you know, more advanced strats, to ask for help if they're having issues, where should they go if they want to, like, having trouble with strat? Where, where's the best place to go seek help? You can go to the Shovel Knight speedrunning Discord, the Spade Brigade. Yeah. Um, you can also go to speedrun.com, uh, go to Shovel Knight uh, on the leaderboard. We have pin strategies over there, resources over there. If you come to the server, we have a bunch of uh, pin strategies and resources. Um, we have several YouTube guides that cover uh, every character. Um, uh, Plague Knight, uh, we do have an 80% tutorial for Plague Knight. That's the least up-to-date one. Um, but other than that, they're all in really good condition. So if you want to learn the 80% route for any of these characters, uh, come join us. Uh, come ask questions. We're always more than willing to, ha uh, to help anyone uh, if you have a yeah. question. If you can record some footage and be like, hey, I'm struggling with this room. What did I do wrong? 
we'll take a look. We'll see. Oh, you did that um, one frame too early, one frame too late. Uh, you weren't jumping here at the point. No. We will happily uh, critique and help you uh, develop your speed run. And don't feel intimidated. This is my favorite part. Don't feel intimidated to just speed run whatever you think is enjoyable. We have several people who just joined the server who are doing God mode speed runs because that's a very fun category. It's incredibly satisfying to just go poof and blow everything up. Just go for King Knight low percent. <laughs> oh, King Knight low percent is terrible. Yeah, it's a nightmare. Nightmare? <laughs> nice. All right, is there anything else uh, you all would like to add before we wrap things up here? Mm. Thank you for having us. Yeah. First. Thank you, Mumu, for asking for my help. That was a pleasure to, to de-arrest uh, Sean Knight. I appreciate you for helping me out with this. Um, with the original plan having been to show off the four knights, I was kind of stressing with how much uh, there would be to de-rust. Uh, and then having the Shovel Knight load split in half also made this way more manageable. So I really appreciate that, especially because a lot of these tricks I don't usually go for. Uh, and so you have a lot more insight on how you get some of these tricks done. Yeah, and um, this was Shovel Knight, and uh, we're going to, no date has set yet, we're going to try and put together some later shows for this for the other characters as well. So if you're more interested in like Plague Knight, King Knight, uh, Spectre Knight, we will hopefully get to all of them in the future. Just going to be a decent amount of distance between them, uh, also to let people prepare, you know, for the showcases. <laughs> Because especially some of those coin strats seem really hard, and like having to to learn those slash derust those is uh, very much appreciated. That took a lot of time, but it's fun. At least it's fun. So it doesn't. It I don't mind it. And I will probably join for a King Knight uh, showcase one day. Oh, I, I'm dragging you for that one. I'm not doing it. <laughs> <laughs> also. Uh... Thank you so much, Tolu, for uh, for showing up for this. Um, Tolu is uh, one of the oldest surviving uh, community members here uh, for Shovel Knight. Wait, uh, what? You're making that sound like there was like a horrible incident. Like, <laughs> <running away. laughs> I mean, you're you're still in the community, and you you're one of the oldest members who's who's still here, uh, and and you know, Biden. Everything was great until the King Nation attacked. Oh God. <laughs> I mean, you're you're not too far off, actually. Yeah, the King Knight patch actually changed a lot, didn't it? Yeah, it added a whole character that uh, is a complete nightmare to learn. Uh, <laughs> yeah. For real, though, King Knight is a very difficult speedrun. We'll definitely talk about King Knight more another time, but uh, King Knight is incredibly challenging. Very fun for some people, and I'm never going to hate on anyone who, who wants to run a specific character. Uh, some people who love running Plague Knight hate running Shovel Knight and vice versa. So whichever character you love running, you will always have my respect for because, hey, you're playing the game in the way that you enjoy, and I appreciate that. All right. I want to thank everybody who was involved, uh, especially anyone who helped out who wasn't on the show. I don't know how many people were involved in this, but I assume there was some help from other people on learning strats. Um, the Shovel Knight community is very welcoming. I've worked with them a few times, so I'm just going to mirror the idea from before that you know, if you want help learning the speedruns, just pop into the Discord, ask for help. You will get it. Uh, if you tune in tomorrow starting at noon, Eastern, there's going to be a Golden Sun race between the four top runners of, I believe it's the Lost Stage. They're going to be doing any percent, no save and quit. Should be about six hours. Four way race will be a lot of fun if you want just a long, comfy RPG speed run. We'll have that for you tomorrow. Otherwise, uh, check out gamesdonequick.com slash hotfix for all of our upcoming shows. You can see everything that's coming up. There's a schedule for May with a full calendar. And uh, if you want to see more information about Summer Games Done Quick 2021, you can go to gamesdonequick.com. All the relevant dates and information are posted there. But we will catch you tomorrow. In the meantime, we're going to take a quick break, and then we're going to raid someone. So if you'd like to see some more speedrunning content here on this uh, lovely weekend, just hang around for a few minutes, and we'll send you off to another stream. Thank you. Thank you very much. Goodbye. <laughs>